Okay, so greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another podcast. We're talking about Parasite Eve, and on top of that, we're also talking about survival horror RPGs. So I am Renegade Operative, I am the host, and next we have our panelists of guests, and we're gonna start with Mr. Immortal Brandle. Hi, I'm not a parasite, not yet at least, so um, yeah, don't spray me. Next up, we have Black Shadow. Yep, howdy all, it's, yeah, it's the Black Shadow here. Uh, I think this is our first podcast uh, that we've done since Resident Evil Village came out. Um, and I mean, it, it has been absolutely hilarious seeing how thirsty some people have been over Lady Dumitresque. Like, all these part ones village series have plotted over, and she doesn't even appear anyways for like at least an hour. Uh, to live in a cold, cruel, you know, clickbait filled world, it is amazing. But howdy, everyone. Next up, we have Divic. Hey, how's it going? Next is Drillbit. Oh, hey, everyone. This should be a fun podcast. Next up is Grolock. There. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. And, you know, just call me Terry. Um, easy. Use my real name. It's not a big deal. Okay, no problem. And next, we are going to do the document now since everyone is here. Um, okay. Just first and foremost, we're letting people know like about two hours in, we're going to grab guests. So if you see new faces in here, it's going to be just typical stuff. The first question is, how did you get introduced into the Parasite E franchise? Recall your first experience with these games overall. Uh, well, so who wants to go, go first? Okay. I'll go first. Well, strangely enough, though, my first experience or I guess exposure to the series is the third birthday because I saw like ads everywhere for the game. So I, I didn't play the game at the time, though. I just know that it existed. So uh, years later, I did some more research on this series called Parasite E because I was exposed to it by someone else. I think it was another friend's um, channel. He was streaming the game. And then I looked into it and I discovered that the third birthday is the third game of the Parasite Eve game. So like, oh, OK, so I checked them out. I regret it playing their birthday and yeah. Oops. <laughs> yeah. So just as bad as I hear. Yes. Uh, it's more <laughs> mediocre than bad though, but as a fan of the series, it's bad. Okay. I mean, <laughs> comparing I guess... it to the earlier games, yeah, it's it's like I haven't played it myself. Um, I think it's one of those games that gets a bit of a bad rap though, but I'll, I'll get to that in a bit. It's one of those like just hear stories about in the distance. I've never actually touched it. Yeah. Let's see. Drill, you want to go next? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I think like the first time I ever got introduced to it was funny enough the PSP game, and then I looked up the other games and thought, wow, they're all completely different. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the case. I think it's gonna be a case where a lot of people have probably were introduced or more recognized from third birthday just because of the age of a lot of people. Um, I think the original games are a little bit more on the niche side, I reckon, when it came out. Like, um, I mean, personally, like, I've been, um, I've known about it series for quite a while, having, you know, mained with, like, Resident Evil, Final Fantasy. Uh, I've always felt this series is, like, if the two of them met in a bar together, horribly drunk, and thought that they could make some magic together. Um, and I think it's up to personal preference whether you think they did or not. Um, but yeah, Parasite, the third birthday is so completely different to the original games. Um, and then like in 2016, it was like late 2016, I actually had like a regular on my YouTube channel who asked me about doing the series. Uh, he actually sent me, and I've still got it here in my hands, uh, like an original soundtrack box for Parasite E's 1 and 2 from Japan. He sent it to, it's still sealed. I've never opened it. I didn't want to. Um, I've such done both the first two games still. Um, I've not touched for a birthday yet. I feel like it deserves a spin, even though, as I say, it gets a, a bit of a bad rap, is my understanding, which I think is a bit of a shame. Yeah, but, um, well, there's a... It's not without reason. I won't say that much. <laughs> like, there's a whole history about that, but that might take too long. I think the problem is, I, I my uninformed opinion is that I think probably a lot of people have gone into this game expecting something and then didn't get it. They probably expect because I mean, it's very different to the original other two games, is my understanding. And I guess people of the series were expecting something of that ilk, and then I'm assuming it was completely different. Um, I suspect that was probably a lot of the problems. I kind of wish I'd had a chance to play it before this, um, but ultimately, like I, I do intend to do it blind eventually. But that's my my kind of like uninformed 
third person taking a guest stance of, of what it looks like. Well, I suppose we'll deep drove into it more as we go, so. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, the, uh, the third birthday deserves a spin in the blender. That's about it. That's my opinion. But <laughs> I, um, God. I, I got introduced to Parasite Eve uh, as a kid. I was really into JRPGs, huge Final Fantasy nut, played a lot of Xeno Gears and all that, and picked up just about everything that Squaresoft put out at the time. Um, and first Parasite Eve, I didn't really catch it the first time too well. And then the second one came out and hooked me because it's Resident Evil with magic. So I was like, yeah, absolutely. Um, and that and the combination of body horror, just like super, super into it. So like I would, I would play it every couple of years with Dino Crisis and all that. So it was like, it was one of the regulars basically in my rotation. Um, a lot of fond memories with two, not so much one, but yeah, two, definitely. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I bet not many people know the first game's a sequel to the novel. Yeah. I'm yeah. aware of it. I've not read the novel, but I'm aware it exists. But the, it act, cool. the release of Parasite Eve actually sparked the new interest in the novel. So yeah. most people didn't know the novel existed before the game. It's basically mm -hmm. like The Witcher, you know, it sparked interest into the novel um, mm -hmm. right after the first game release. Uh, yeah, it happens. My story is... Online. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was going to say my story is not really too extravagant, so I'm going to be brief. But I really just technically started playing this series this year on my channel. I've played the first one uh, for a couple of hours, and then I tried the second one. It's definitely a contrast that we're going to talk about later in terms of gameplay, but overall, I, I really am liking these games for what they are. A lot of people say that, well, their birthday is not really that great, so I'm curious to hear their opinions since I have not touched their birthday at all. Um, but so far, from what I see is good, I do believe that Square had a really good series on their hands, and I hope they continue it in the future. Um, so yeah, my first experience, of course, I had to look up like how old I was when it came out. So I was nine and I was like that sci-fi kid who would watch sci-fi channel all the time. Not, not like unsolved mysteries, but like the ones that were kind of like trying to be that. So one of the concepts that really bothered me as a kid was spontaneous human combustion. And my sister picked up the game and started playing it. And I watched and that game fucked me up. <laughs> Everyone, like, I rewatched the movie, <laughs> but people literally just exploding, and I was like, "That that could happen." Oh my god! Yeah, it 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 really <laughs> did a number on me. And then, like, well into my adulthood, is when I actually picked it up again. I was like, "Oh, hey, these these games are just good." Yeah, one of the things that really intrigued me was the fact that the body horror was all over the cutscenes, and you see the rats like sort of having their heads split open like swiss cheese and i'm like well what the fuck the, these cutscenes are even more gorier than some of the stuff you see in resident evil the bad news right. is it is it gets worse um i don't want to spill anything for you because i've never played it but all i will say is mutant babies all right and that's, that's that's all i'll say it was one of the most horrific things i've ever seen in a horror game until resident evil village like two weeks ago and that well. goddamn thing I and think that probably beat what was at the end of Power Set Evil, but still, that's some horrific things in this game. It's like, it's frightening. Oh, don't worry. I will kick them like a football over the field goal. So. <laughs> oh, no, you won't. Not this thing will beat your ass like it beat everyone. <laughs> oh, now I'm even more interested. I can't wait. There's also a thing you got to remember at the time is that Squaresoft was kind of competing, soft competing with Blizzard to like push this huge, you know, uh, these what like FMVs and like these really beautiful cinematics and all that kind of stuff, super tied into like how effective the visual art is in the earlier Parasite Eve games. So if everyone's finished, I guess we can move on to number two, right? Yeah. Uh, who wants could to? Be, could be a big yeah. Who wants to read that off? Anyone? Anyone? Yeah, I could do it. Okay. What were your thoughts about the gameplay mechanics for Parasite Eve 1, Parasite Eve 2, and Third Birthday? Um, as a quick bullet point, how did you feel about Parasite Eve 2 converting your gameplay to be more of a Resident Evil clone? Did it still work for you as a real-time RPG? 
it's, uh, it's, it's it's a big question. It's loaded. I think it's probably better to start at the beginning. Um, yeah, start with Parasite like, Eve one and then make our way down. It's probably be best. I mean, I think this game, like to me, is very ambitious because the danger I think you always have in these sort of titles and genres that try to be hybrids. Um, you know, a game like this, which obviously there's a lot of soul horror, but it's also an RPG. In that it's a real sticking point like if you try and appeal to both crowds the danger is you don't appeal to anyone you're just kind of like there trying to do both things and you do both pretty poor um i think the thing that i think probably set power city off is that it was it was horror it was plenty enough horror for those that have come from that background resident evil's his son hills but it wasn't too kind of rpg heavy to be a deterrent and i think as well Somehow at the same time, those that are much more kind of, you know, playing like your your Final Fantasies, your Xeno Gears, your like Legend of Goons, whatever the heck else, you know, it was something a bit more like with a horror aspect, but somehow retained a lot of that core RPG. It somehow found like that pretty good sweet spot, I think, the original game. Uh, now, obviously, they changed it a little bit with Parasite Eve 2. It became a bit more Resident evil I guess, for lack of a better way of putting it. And then Third Birthday... I don't know. I have to let someone else know. Shooter. Yeah, it became a, a, something entirely different. And, you know, as is a lot of things, your your mileage is, is going to vary. Um, but I think, like, it's, it's hard to say, because I know some people have already said here that they want, um, you know, they prefer Parasite Eve 2 to 1. Now, personally, I thought 1 was a far more accomplished system. I, 2 felt a little bit too grindy for me. You know, there's going to be some some different opinions. Um, but definitely both of them had their had their bonuses and, and, and the things that worked, uh, things that ultimately, ultimately didn't work. Um, but you can't say that they weren't brave in trying something different because, I, you know, this whole blending of genres, I don't think it was really that big a thing back in, like, the late 90s. You know, it's, it's a thing we see a lot more nowadays of genres taking little bits of here, this, that, and the other. But, like, 20 years ago, like, I think it was still pretty novel. Yeah, I definitely agree uh, on that Parasite Eve system is, like, really unique and whatnot. But that, that's what's the beauty of it, though. I, in my honest opinion, though, I think it was a perfect blend of, of survival horror and RPG. Mostly RPG, given the um the, the nature of the game itself, though. But I, I think it was definitely a perfect blend. Not without faults, of course, though, but just how they how they're able to incorporate it together. Yeah. It was definitely amazing. It's the the, the yeah. danger is is not becoming niche. That's the real pitfall. I think a lot of these games, a lot of series at sort of this sort of time trying this, you know, you, you again, you just be, you kind of become this hybrid and then you don't have an audience because you're not pleasing anyone because you're taking little bits here and there. Somehow Square did a good job of it and managed to not completely alienate everyone, which, you know, fair play to them. Unfortunately, two, though, like, yeah, then two happened and then they just threw it out, out the window. Well, I was, yeah, was going to yeah. say, in, in 2000, they came out with Vagrant Story, which is the same control scheme and style, essentially, of Parasite Eve, and they screwed it up completely. Nobody plays Vagrant Story. So it shows, it shows you how hard it is to balance this stuff, you know, and even I, nowadays, yeah, yeah. like, it's so, you know, it's a really fine line to tread. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I would have loved to sit in on, like, how they came up with it, and just, like, how they, like, melded it together when they were, like, coming up with the game and stuff. Like, it's just so different from anything I played up until that point, and it was just like, yeah, just it has I a mean, good feel to it. Basically, be the fly on the wall. Well, yeah, considering all they had to base it on was just the novel. Yeah, which I have to read now, especially uh, that got mentioned, because, like, some of those Japanese novels get real weird. Yeah, I wonder why. Does. It really does. Yeah. But oh. uh, overall, like, I'm just going to say this right now, though. Overall, I think Parasite Eve 1 had the best system in place. 2 was fun, but flawed. 3, no, was competent. But a lot of problems kind of take away um, on what it could have been, you know? Especially yeah. its own RPG mechanics. They didn't do a good job on that at all with the um, little extra power-ups things. or work I forgot what they're called. Call them in on third birthday, but yeah, we'll get to I that once we get it's to like segments. some crafting some system. It, it's so interesting because like every time we're talking about something, there's always there's an asterisk next to third birthday that people keep bringing up, and it's just like it's like it's the elephant in the room, I guess, right? It is, uh, but I mean, this this happens with a lot of series, uh, but like it's just kind of crazy because there's only three of them, so yep. like you know, three it's, and... it's kind of a bit more stuck. It's not like a series of like fourteen games, you know, and then suddenly like Zelda Two is like, hmm, that was really different to all the rest of them. 
Um, there's only three of them, so it's it's kind of harder to ignore. Um, and it does generally require so because it's it's just so different to all the rest. Um, the thing is, it came out like how many years did it come out after Parasite Eve? It was like years. Ago. About 10 oh, years after or something? Yeah, it, from Parasite Eve 2 to third birthday, it was 12 years. Which is astonishing. Like, that's a long time to go between, like, entries of a series. Yeah, what's kind of crazy is that originally they wanted it to be a mobile game, but I think the technology wasn't there, so they moved to PSP. I mean, that's probably for the best. I dread to think like what third birthday would be, and from what I know of it as a mobile game, my gosh, I can't believe oh, yeah, and... it would be a gacha game where you have different outfits for Aya. Yeah, <laughs> we're talking about 2009 mobile tech. Yeah, this is yeah, so it's a world true. away from what it is nowadays. This is true. I do admit that. Um, I suppose going a bit more back to gameplay specifically, I, I don't know if anyone agrees because um, like Parasite Eve for me was. It kind of felt clever in how it tried to, you know, being like, again, I've, I've played a lot of RPGs, I've played a lot of horror. Um, you know, to me, like, when it's trying to incorporate these these aspects of RPG, you know, it's not just a simple case of, you know, gaining levels and getting stats, that sort of thing. You know, it was the whole idea of, like, you, you've got your guns, um, and you sort of, like, you know, do you develop them, you upgrade them, you mess around with them, which is, I think was kind of a nice, it kind of gives, um, you know, something completely different i've never seen a game like at that sort of time anything like that that kind of idea um i think it was also nice to try and give like almost like a bit of individuality as well and almost like a bit of personality to the guns you're you're using rather than just being tools to take on yeah these these horrible monstrosities um and then yeah with parasite Eve 2 they completely changed that they kind of went for something a bit more kind of standard and also i think that to me it's like really grindy i think that was my biggest take from parasite Eve 2 was it felt like a very grindy sort of game um which i don't think really suits something like parasite Eve, you know which is opening it to be kind of like a horror um you know and at least in parasite Eve 1 you didn't have to like sit in a park for like four hours to grind necessarily just to get through the next area um or you know god forbid um you know having to like get all your inventory from like a car and move it to another car um mm. which was horrific and i buried the game for that in my series and said this was a horrendous mechanic and i don't know why anyone thought this was a good idea there's a reason it got cut out of Resident Evil Remake, because it's not good, and people don't particularly enjoy doing footwork like that. I, I was glad I had the turbo on. Uh, but that was my biggest complaint for Parasite Eve 2, is it, it, considering how original the original game was, or the first game, it just felt very grindy and time-consuming, and just a lot of busy work, which is a great shame. It, like, it felt like, I wouldn't say ruined is the word, but just, like, really disappointing. See, and I'm going to sit in the opposite camp on this, because with Parasite Eve 1, the biggest thing that stuck out to me is when you're upgrading your guns or you're doing anything like that, the first thing in my head was like, oh, this is the junction system out of Final Fantasy VIII. This is literally the exact same That's thing. a good show. That's a good show. Except I'm not putting Ifrit in my pocket. I'm putting Ifrit on my assault rifle. Like, cool. All right. Um, and then with the item box thing with two, if you want to transition into two, um, annoying, but... I'm, again, going to be one of those outliers that I like grinding and that kind of stuff because I I like all my big, awesome guns. So I will <laughs> grind the shit out of monsters for hours. I do not care. I mean, you don't need to, you don't need it to beat the game, but I just, I'll beat the shit out of monsters all day because it's fun. Yeah, yeah it's like, if, 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 that's, if that's your thing, then yeah, you're yeah. good to rock yeah, and roll. I mean, growing up on JRPGs, you got to do it. So it's just like, it's mm. one of those things that like, it's a hurdle that I've already passed mentally. I'm like, yep, that's just a part of the game. All right. Yeah. I, I think honestly, it's, it's, I, go on, go on. I, I think it's based on like the grind itself though. Cause like, I don't want a problem grinding in games. Doesn't matter what the drama is though, but is it fun at the end of the day? Like is the game fun enough for me to go over the grind or is the reward worth it? If it's not, then, you know, that's kind of a problem. Yeah, yeah. it's mileage may vary is something that I think you're going to hear quite a lot over the next two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Um, so far from what I played at least for like two, I, I did enjoy the game. Like some of the some of the choices that they did make was kind of weird. And I did say like what happened was it seemed like Square just looked at RE and they said, Well, it's time to copy your homework. I'm gonna do that. There you go. There's some sort of like nostalgia factor there because I really do like RE and I really do like this game. So 
in a weird way it kind of messes um for the first game i did enjoy that as well because it, it just seemed like it was something different at the time you usually don't see like survival horror rpgs like put together uh but they managed to pull it off make these systems work and have the active you know time battle and everything and that was really good uh the only thing i kind of didn't like is that i also feel like there are times where you run into invisible walls and there's times where it's hard to really evade people because of that and i understand the whole game is like it has this pre-rendered background setup and it's obviously old and some of that stuff i need to take into account but i i did not like that feeling compared to the second game so there are like positives and negatives that i can appreciate uh i like the presentation a little bit better in the first game but i like the gameplay a lot more in the second one yeah it's okay, I think it, uh, it's I, I was quickly say i think you gotta it's right. gotta be taken there's like a timeline context here so parasite eve 2 came out at the very end of 1999 and at this point like resident evil 3 had been out for like three or four months yeah mm -hmm. um and like i think that was one of my issues with that game because they obviously they took a big page at resident evil which isn't a bad thing to do but like it had already been out the, the for like years and it just didn't feel like for, for a series of his first game that felt really kind of unique and kind of you know like different it really felt like there wasn't enough originality to me at a base level um, i think that was my problem it felt like some ways they kind of moved backwards and for a you know you think how you know resident Evil 3 looked as well in 1999 even when the first came out um and then you create parasite Eve 2 um you know and it just to me it didn't quite look the part um it mechanically it worked decently enough at times um, but I just felt like there was a lot of scope for a lot more ambition with the second game. I agree with uh, that. To give a yeah. little context though on um, the development of Parasite Eve 2, in fact, actually, a lot of staff that worked on some of the Resident Evil games, uh, I don't remember who, who, who was who and worked on which game, right? But yeah, we had quite a few people who actually worked on Parasite Eve 2, which is why mm -hmm. it felt like Resident Evil. On yeah. top of that, um, the game was actually originally going to be a spin-off title starring another character altogether. One, um, I forgot what his name was though, but Kyle. Uh, oh, I can't forget yeah, yeah. Kyle. Oh, yeah, Kyle, Kyle, yeah. I have yeah, an so, issue with Kyle. <laughs> yeah, it's going to start him. Thing. Oh man, it's we're gonna have a talk about Kyle. Final Fantasy <laughs> Seven sweater, Kyle. Yeah, so it was actually going to start him though, but Square Enix had got like low wet feet and decides like, okay, this poor and um, I uh, just make it Parasite Eve too. Obviously though, it did better with her in it though, but personally, I think she just left it alone as you know a spinoff. Because it was going to focus more on some of horror versus, you know, what we got out of it. I guess they thought it wouldn't yeah. sell well if it was just a spinoff. I mean, all fairness, so we only had one gay at that point. So, like, <laughs> damn if you do, damn if you don't. But besides that, um, to give at least my um, take on Parasite Eve 2. Now, yeah, like um, Renegade said, he liked the gameplay a lot because it felt like Resident Evil. I'm actually going to be, like, I guess the outlier here and say that I don't, l actually, I don't like like, but I don't like the fact that it's Resident Evil with Parasite Eve 2. The, the reason why I love Parasite Eve 1 so much is of its uniqueness and how it blended together its two gameplay style elements, whereas yeah. two threw it out the way. Now, yeah, on its yeah. own, it's, hold on, Joe. On its own, it's actually a really good game, though, but the biggest thing that gets on my nerves is that it's tank controls and not free analog controls like in the first mm -hmm. game. That yeah. throws me off every time I play two. Yeah, yeah, yeah and now it just... Like, it, 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 go on, go on. I was just gonna say, yeah, now it just blends among the other survival horror slash Resident Evil, Resident Evil look-alike games. Also, hold on, hold on, Drill. Uh, we have another guest, uh, Black Devil. Can you hear us? Hey, I'm here. Yep. Oops. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you were muted, so it was hard to really like get past the intros, but now you're here. Yep. So you can now join in on the discussion of us talking about Parasite Eve, and the question we're on is like number two, which is um you know talking about the gameplay between one two and third birthday yeah the the first game is really good i thought uh there's a good mix of survival horror elements and uh some rpg elements there too combat was just really kind of slow for me i didn't really get into uh the just the speed of how long things took sometimes and I love the story. First game was just, it's solid. Soundtrack bangs really hard. I love that too. Mm -hmm. but the biggest pet peeve I have is there's no fucking way to reload your gun during a battle. And there's no way to know how much 
ammo you have while you're fighting. So a lot of times when you're in the middle of a fight, you just kind of run out of ammo, and then you have to wait for her to do that. Or if you catch it in enough time, then you can go back to your menu to, to reload. Other than that, like the, the second game I thought was... Ugh. Like it, I played a few hours of it. I, I, I rented it, and it wasn't... It didn't really catch my attention like the first game did. Uh, and I never actually got a chance to play Third Birthday. I actually just found out about that game uh, about a couple years ago. I didn't even know they had made a... Is it considered a reboot, or is it just the third one? It's, it's, a, sequel. Thir- it's a sequel. Yeah, it's a sequel. Also, um... It's a bit tricky. <laughs> for, for the reloading, like, criticism, uh, usually I just wait until the active time gauge, like, shows me all the ammo she has, but even then, it is kind of annoying when you run out, and it's like, well... Now I have to sort of beat enemies down with this fucking, uh, what is it, nightstick. And that was yeah. pleasant in the beginning, and I was getting, like, killed. That was fun. Yeah, there, there is a bit of ammo counting, admittedly, in the first game, which I didn't mind, because it's not a... I didn't find it a particularly big deal, but I can understand what that might grate some people. It's like, it, it should just tell you and give you an idea. And obviously, the second game, they had to do that because it's a totally different battle system. You know, it wasn't kind of was like old school sort of turn basey almost it was much more live action so uh they had no choice yep well, absolutely that, with, with just talking about mechanics again really quickly with the second one you had all this like weird interaction with a bunch of different items like yeah you had all these gun attachments that were strange like i the first time i played the game i didn't know until like halfway through the flashlight will just instant kill some of the enemies in the game or that some of the attachments will just like completely neutralize entire sections of the game essentially so you had this like weird experimentation with the second one, which is why I guess I gravitate towards it more um, that because, you know, Resident Evil style, blah, blah, blah. But um, just all these weird items and weird things you can do in that game. Just I don't know. It just it was it's very was wacky. Right. It was very. Yeah, I mean, it's to say, the, I mean, the first game I had mean, its degree of wackiness as well. as well. Like, you know, the yeah. the, 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 the pro- problem I admittedly had with the first game is that there's a lot of shit. That you, uh, sorry. Uh, that's fine. Um, <laughs> um anyways there's a lot of stuff that you can do with like your weapons and like your armor and like messing around with stuff that you can do which the game never actually really tells you right um like a lot of stuff i didn't learn until i did the the extra run which you do after the events of the main game where you go to the um uh, the Chrysler oh, building. Um, you go through that whole dungeon, uh, and you kind of you learn about a lot of this stuff because you have to learn about this stuff because it's brutal and will mm. kill you at every opportunity possible. And like your standard weaponry, as you've got it, is just not good enough. So you have to, like, you realize that you can mess around with things in certain ways, and you can do crazy stuff. It's like it would have made the original game so much easier if you didn't know. But it's like, should you have known in the first place? I don't know. I mean, both games nice have good experimentation, 100. percent But also, like... sir, correct me if I'm wrong on something though. If you like try to dismantle your gun, though, it will destroy the weapon in hand, or will it destroy the part. Uh, I think I... it's both actually. Like, cause I I did that once, and I had to restart my save. But you can, I, I think you can take the part off and blend it into another gun to make it stronger. That's kind of how it works. I can't remember. It's been like four years since I did my series on one. I, I honestly don't remember. Yeah, you can't uh, you can dismantle the weapon with a tool, and you can take all the parts as well to put it on another gun. Yeah, yeah, you need, you need the tool to do that. I think you can transfer the special ability that that gun would have too, or you can. It does destroy it, but you can switch one of the two. Yeah, that's that's how it worked. Because I, I I did that recently, and and when I destroyed my like gun the first time, I was like, what the fuck, and then I reloaded it did it again and then i took the part off and put it to another gun so that's how it works it's kind of yeah. confusing a little bit but when you mm. read it you understand it ultimately yeah it's, it's, it's counterintuitive at first but again like if you want to delve into some of the extra stuff in that game like you have to know this and you've got to master it and you gotta understand what the hell you're doing because I, I oh I, it's just 77 floors of pain baby <laughs> 77 <laughs> floors of pain oh uh, i'll get there i'll get there soon number two actually like, I like the gameplay of number two. I had a lot of fun with it because it was my first time playing it. Like, I think, like, when I heard this podcast was happening, uh, and it was a lot of fun. The one thing that bothered me so much, I hate the puzzles. I hate Yeah, them. I want to. Yes, this, oh needs, this needs this needs its oh, entry. That's oh, safe and dry. Field that's too. safe and dry field. Oh, my God. The puzzles in two were incredibly obtuse, and I don't think anyone can suggest otherwise. Like, some of them were. V- 
like crazy wacky. Um, there, there's the there's the whole like uh, optional puzzle with like uh, you've got to go around dry field and looking at certain like bits during the day and the night. Yeah, count the barrels. Um, yeah, count, yeah, what the, the count hell. The and one of them is almost is like is I I missed it and I actually had to redo part of my series and I did it on screen. There's like a window you get one opportunity to look at for part of the puzzle solution. If you miss it, it's gone. You've lost it. It's over. And I'm just like this. This seems very strange. Uh, you've got like the the moon gate puzzle. Oh, um, yeah. There's and it's it's like it's crazy. Like I've never seen uh, a game like this. Like kind of have puzzles in this sort of similar fashion. And a lot of it's missable. And like I don't know. I I, I wasn't happy with that. I like I I'm cool with puzzles in my games. And I've I've done them. plenty of Resident Evils. I am and Silent Hills. It's fine. They seem really obtuse and just kind of out of midair like there's the one about like the japanese stuff as well and it's just like how are you supposed to know half this stuff like, very strange yeah. the moon gate you <laughs> mentioned is so obtuse i have no idea how you're like because i tried to just figure it out i just cheated at some point because it's so weird that it's in the game it, i i don't <laughs> yeah the one saving grace is several of these obtuse puzzles you can just brute force if you want to you can do that but like it's mm. Mm, I've seen uh, they could have been better implemented. Uh, yeah, I, I'm one of those people that gets stopped in his tracks by slide puzzles. So uh, Same, I was yeah. streaming Parasite Eve 2 at one point, and I had a few people watching it, and I was doing the slide puzzle that's later in the game. Yes, and I was stuck on it for an hour. Yeah, and it was embarrassing um, because any time I I could do most of this stuff just fine. Puzzles, okay, you know, obtuse, whatever. You stick me in a room with a slide puzzle and you say you're going to die in an hour? Like, I'm, I can't. <laughs> so, like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely give you that. The puzzles are weird. At that point, I just passed it to my partner and she just took care of it because I, I yeah. can't do those either. Fuck that. Yeah. Yeah, I got lucky with a couple of mine in my series doing it blind. Like, a couple I just fluked into. There was one or two I had to look up after the fact. So I was like, how are you supposed to actually work this out? And it's, um, it's even one at the very start as well. Like, some of it's optional, but some of it's, like, so important to do, even though it's technically optional to get back to previous areas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, can't, I can't defend it. I can't defend it. All right, um, I, did we say everything we needed to say about two? Okay, I, yeah, this, this is going to be a big yeah. point. This, this, this is encompassing oh, yeah. a lot, though. Yeah. All right, so uh, I guess it's time for us to go to third birthday, then. <laughs> I have no Man. comment. I have not played third birthday. So, I same, played, same. I think I played it to completion. Same. I, I, mean, have, I have no comment about it because I never played it, but go on, Drew. I just, honestly, it's not too bad if you just take it as its own game. I think they specifically said they made it so different to try to introduce to introduce Parasite Eve to new audiences because of the huge time gap, and that yeah. kind of feels like that. Yeah, I, I, and I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that inherently. Uh, you know, it's, it's it, yeah, it's been it was twelve years. Like you've got some creative license to mess around with things. Um, you're not going to please some people when you do that, of course, because like any video game series that is heavily dipped in nostalgia, there will always be people who wish things to be as they were and completely unchanged. That's just the way it goes. So, so as an outsider who has never played Third Birthday, can someone describe what the what it's like, what the like mechanics are like? Because I don't know. I'm just okay. Yeah. It's a third person shooter, right? It's heavily yeah. encouraged you to like customize your guns, get some new guns, and um, like. Well, customizing in the way you want to, right? On top of that, they removed the parasite powers, so that's gone. But yeah. in return, they gave you this weird mind jack ability where you could go over to like another person's body and you take over them completely, turn that person to Aya. So yeah, some honestly, weird the I the idea is pretty cool and how you use it during battle, where you constantly swap between bodies and then be able but, to use different guns. But the execution was the problem. Like, let's remove the fact that it's part of Parasite Eve, though. The game itself is just really mediocre because it has a lot of, again, neat ideas, though, but um, it didn't you know, utilize it to its full potential because um, what, I, I forgot what the mechanic is called, though, but basically it's like a grid-type thing where you can go in and um, mess around with, um, with the stuff and customize it or whatever, but it is a potential page, so you have a chance for the stuff to work, though, and more times than not, at least in my um, gameplay experience, the stuff that um, triggered like it was fun to use when it works though, but you can't get it to work. And didn't she have to like change her pants? 
Yeah, she, uh, yeah, yeah, she gets battle damage, and yes. yeah. <laughs> If Wait, you what? see, what is this? yeah, she gets <laughs> yeah, that damage. Though. I'm aware of this. I'm aware of this. But uh, like, it leaves nothing to the imagination. And once you get to stage two, I'm gonna pay to you that much. But um, yeah, it's wow. it's it's cute because it's kind of, it's 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 managing to try and introduce a bit of realism, but ultimately it's also a bit of fan service, probably on the side. Yeah, yeah I mean, but that's the like, ironic thing. I, though, like, I will not it's... berate them for that because that shower scene in Parasite Eve two. Well, that needs to be said. No, I, I will break them on this. You know why? Because they're trying to sell you on the game on being more realistic, but yeah. you have shit like that, right? So, like, it's totally indifferent on what they said versus what is given to us. Yeah, and that game, I think they actually got a bit of flack for it because I think there are some reviewers saying that they were over sexualizing Aya or some shit. Air quotes, Aya. I mean, well, I will. I mean, people say that. Have you like? Did, did they not remember the concept arts and some of the promotional arts for Parasite Eve One back in like ninety six, ninety seven? That is, that is promotional know? art versus what we got in third person. Like, I'm, they, I, I, they, I'm, I agree. True. Like yeah. they kept it tamed in one night, right? Like they did a like I would say a good job showing the sexuality of you know what of the characters and other themes of the game, right? Versus in um, third birthday, it was a bit more gratuitous and just straight in your face, right? Like. It'd be one thing if Aya was like bloody up from like the entries, right? But she's practically spotless, just wearing, you no, know, practically nothing after stage two. Yeah, and you what's know? kind of funny is that one of the devs said that they kind of left it there as an incentive to see, to be like, oh, if you want to see more of Aya without clothes, you got to get her. Well, here's a kicker too. Um, this is also a shower scene in um third birthday as well. But guess what? You get to beat the game. I was it fifty times or whatever to unlock it. You so gotta guess earn what? that shit. No, yeah, God. YouTube. Wow. Yeah, fact, yeah. Being, fake up is the internet nowadays. But back in 2009, you know, different world. Yeah. But yeah, and, I mean, the story is also another thing, too, because it gets really convoluted. Like, to yeah, the point it doesn't even ending. feel like it. Yeah, mm -hmm. the ending, too. We'll talk about story a little bit later on, but like, yeah, I mean, uh, this is a passing thing. Yeah. yeah, but. <laughs> I always thought well, it stemmed, I always thought everything, like the whole story thing stemmed from being originally a mobile game. Yeah, because it was pretty large in scope in comparison to 1 and 2, though, but it, it wasn't good. It wasn't good, to be quite honest. But, um, mm -hmm. honestly, I don't have much to say about the gameplay anymore. It's just, it, it was not, it was solid enough, but it wasn't properly executed to its full potential. It's serviceable, although if you like the first two games, you'll probably dislike it. Um, mm -hmm. When I was the, the little bit of, that I played a third birthday, it felt like a really bad version of Metal Gear Portable Ops. Um, mm. And it just, you know how you have to grip that PSP a certain way and you just your hands are yeah. sitting in a certain position. It just sucks. That's one of those control schemes that just sucks. Like if I if I emulated it, like I would probably play it and just be like, whatever. I'm just you know cruise through it in an afternoon. It's only like six hours long, but um, uh, it I played I think about an hour and a half, and I was like, yeah, okay, this is dumb, but whatever. Like I'm just killing time, kind of a thing. I think I was working at the time, and um, there was some kind of story element that came up, um, and I just went, wow, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard, and I just shut it off and never ever touched it again. <laughs> so, Ouch. Yeah, I was just like, wow, that's really like I could write a better story than that. And I'm a terrible writer and I shut it off. So that's yep. Should probably give it a chance at some point, but uh, I don't know. I can't be asked at the moment. <laughs> Unsuitable. Uh, I, was, I think we could go on to number three now. Yeah. We're good here. OK, no, I'll, I'll read this one off for you, operative. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your favorite weapon and magic ability to use as a loadout? Oh, okay. Now this right here, like the biggest pro I will give Parasite Eve is like the um, the powers are amazing. I think they're better than they were in the first game. But Inferno is busted. Like mm. Inferno and Combustion, like, those are the two um best skills you can get. No, oh, Necrosis, man. Necrosis is yeah, so Necrosis good. Is bosses. really good. Holy shit! Yes, yeah, Necrosis, Necrosis is is nasty. Uh, for All me, right. necrosis, metabolism, combustion, and just make sure you get grab that black key card in the beginning, and you're you're set for two. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, I I think that was a problem I had with both games is that I like a lot of the magic feels kind of very unbalanced. Some of it is amazingly good, and some of it is just 
like why would you ever Midland touch him? Which, which is which is never great you know you want to be giving a lot of spells a lot of reasons to be be able to use i mean perhaps that Eve one didn't exactly have many it had what maybe like what 10 12 or something like that and there wasn't even that that many more in Parasite like eve 2 um but there was a, a definitely like a lot of obsoleting of stuff pretty early on which i was always a little bit worried about and i never particularly liked um i thought that it could have been executed a bit better but on the magic side i think the weapons was was nice though especially in the first game i felt like you could play around and it also you could like kind of move stuff to your style if you wanted to have something that's just big hit heavy hitting but slow or something a bit more maneuverable like i stuck with the handgun for like the majority of the first game because i liked it. it was quite a versatile weapon but you know you could definitely go for something a bit more you know, like a shotgun or you know something a bit more rapid whatever else which i think i think worked pretty well i don't know about you guys um always been a fan of m4 and a pike with metabolism or energy <laughs> shot just mm -hmm. that's that's my room deleter. Like if I if I want to run through that game and not think about anything that I'm doing in Parasite Eve 2 specifically, I just as soon as I get the M4 and the Pike, I just my brain shuts off and mm -hmm. I just energy shot and run through rooms. Like it's yeah, just... and again and like that it works, but that's it's yeah. not it's not so good. That you can just do that. I mean, that's, oh, I'm oh, the problem. it's one of those things where like I need to do something. I need to fill the time. Like if I'm doing mm -hmm. this, this is what I do. Now you want to you want to talk about a professional's weapon, you uh, gunblade, but that's. That's a whole oh. other story. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say yeah. mine in the That's first it. one was uh, scan and energy shot. Scan was really useful. Uh, and combine that with the PSG-1, you're pretty much unstoppable from a distance. I, I really like that. But a lot of her uh, abilities in the first game were, it was like she was a, a healer and attacker all rolled into one. Mm -hmm. So you had a lot to kind of experiment with. But those yeah. two in particular were really fun to use. Yeah, there was. A, I think there was a lot of that was cool stuff. I was always a bit. Um, some of it was kind of underwhelming. Um, I know, like obviously the late game, you get like the uh, the special spell, which lets you do like the uh, like, almost like the almost like your summon ability of the game. But yeah. uh, like personally, I never found it. I, I found that more of a hindrance because it was hideous, hideously expensive. And by the time you're in situations where you need to be using that, like you probably can just deal more damage with just your general weapon rate um you know and again because of the way the mechanic system worked for like how your energy regenerated um until i learned later on that you could like change equipment and create magic that way which i which the game never tells you or at least if it did it i never i never spotted yeah. it um I slight spoilers there happened. admittedly sorry ren but yeah uh, invest in that um <laughs> but even so it, was, it just felt like kind of underwhelming you know when why would i want to like use a summons effectively when all i can do is have a good weapon um cast haste to myself and just shoot away you know ammo is not a problem i can just you know just fire and fire and fire um which is a little bit of a shame because you, you spend so much of the game getting to this point you get this ability and you're like Meh. Well, it's a that's... bit of a shame that's kind of the fun of the repeat playthroughs. I mean, like, and that applies for one and two. Like, with two, sometimes I'll just, like, I'll go through, like, all right, cool, I've got my save, I'll just do a shotgun run this time. I'll just, like, just do shotguns or, or pistol hydro rounds or something stupid like that. Um, or, you know, change it up for a nightmare run or something. But, like, there's enough experimentation in there with the guns and the attachments and the ammo and the little trinkets you can put on yourself that, like, there's all this stuff you could do, so... I think it was one of the biggest sort of, I wouldn't say it's not a selling point of the game because you didn't really know about it until you played it, but it's definitely one of the catchier mechanics that I think for those who wanted to engage in the game on a more deeper level, like there was tons to play around with um, yeah. and it kept people kind of wanting to, and people did want to redo games like that, then yeah, that is, you can do all sorts of different things. Um, but yeah, so I'll give them that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess we on Dauntless? I have not gone yet. Uh, the only thing I can say for now is um that I I really enjoy the M4 combination and combustion. I feel like uh any flame type weapons in any type of role playing game that's like right up my alley. So that's the first thing that I go to to use. Uh, hmm. I I do see a whole host of other abilities for two, and I kind of want to just dabble and experiment and see what I can get. But I'm trying to grind for like battle points, and that's a bitch. Uh, so once I get that, I'll try to play around a little bit more later on. 
Yeah, that's the problem. Is say that when like when you do need to grind, like there typically isn't a lot of great places to actually do it. It's kind of a problem. Yeah, it's just been like. My, yeah, I've just been like running around and shooting things, and hopefully yeah. I get some points so I can get like a level two. But that's about yeah. it for now. Especially, especially early game, like it's it's kind of a drag. You've kind of almost got to. I think I found like just pushing through it for a bit, getting to it later, and then trying to do it there seemed a bit more productive. But I mean, again, well, your mileage may vary. If <laughs> I remember the game correctly, because it's been a few months since I played it, um, almost after every significant story event, the whole map repops. Yes. Like, so you just re-clear it and you just yes. go, okay, cool, next event, and then just re-clear and like Yeah, you, you could definitely do it in the second game. Like if you wanted to yeah. do yeah, that would be the way to do it. One was obviously it had like the kind of the old sort of school random encounter sort of system and in all these areas, yeah. which was, you know, serviceable. It, it did its job, but like the first game didn't need to be anywhere near as grind heavy as the second I found. The first you could go through majority of it. If you were to grind for a bit, cool. But I didn't think it was necessary. Not like two, where it felt like you felt like the game was almost encouraging you to grind. I'm like, uh, do I need to be let down this path? Made me feel like an exterminator. I didn't feel good. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Terminator, Parasite Eve two. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Terminate Eve. Let's go. Terminate Eve. All right. So I guess we can move on to number four. Mm. I'll read that off. So. What is your favorite and least favorite enemy between all the games? This can include boss battles as well. Horror okay. mutant baby for all of those. Uh, <laughs> hmm. I do not like the yeah. um. Uh, was it ultimate being in the first game? Especially when you um go to we have to destroy the um. Well, spoilers. I'm not sure you beat the game yet, Rin, but um, destroy yeah, the ship. Sh shut your ears here. Yeah, yeah like that. That, that, that final makes, part. Sorry. Yeah, that final part's just a huge pain in the ass. I think it, I think the way it's set up is really cool. Um, yeah, I, I like the idea that you're obviously you're fighting something and it's like literally developing in front of you, and like despite everything you're trying to do, you just can't stop it until obviously you just set, destroy everything within the proximity. Uh, I think it's composite really good, but it was a bitch of a fight. Um, you know, especially like some of its later forms. Uh, when it starts splitting into two, and some of just like it just attacks and attacks and attacks so brutally. Um, Gary is your best friend. <laughs> yeah, um, but no, I I think like, like thematically, like I think the final boss of the first game was was really well done. Um, I'd never, you know, there's not many times you're sort of fighting something that's literally growing in front of you like that, and then eventually you have to obviously get Maida to help you with like, you know, this shitty thing you've had for half the game. Like, why have I got this? And then suddenly, magic weapon. So, uh, um, you know, to be technical, um, ultimate beings aren't even the final boss of the game. No, no, there is of course another one beyond that in. Oh man, that was as much a puzzle as a boss fight, I think. Um, fighting, yeah. Uh, she fight literally has me. like what five times the amount of health compared to the ultimate being. Like, she's. Yeah, like... I, I, it's, I say, I, I, I've always say it was kind of like a puzzle because I think you, you had to understand how she worked to actually beat her because otherwise she would just gradually heal for more and more and more, and that's why I think it took me like about ninety minutes or so, and just experimenting, um, uh, and noticing like things you do and things you don't do and how like she reacts to it and then realize you've kind of got to attack in a specific way in specific times to stop her from just like healing for so much damage you can't account for it which i think was cool and i think it's nice that, that you know, not a lot of games really do that but in a game where you've basically just had to brute force everything when suddenly you effectively have a puzzle for a final boss it's like it's you know I mean, you've got no reason to expect it Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely different uh, for that game. I will. I personally, I will say, I think like Parasite Eve 2's bosses to me, I enjoyed a lot more, especially like the final boss fight for the second game. I really enjoyed uh, taking on not the the Brahmin bit, but like the uh, the the other part, um, whatever the heck it's called. Uh, oh, Eve, yeah, it was just called Eve, I believe it was. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was a really cool fight. Um, again, like you know, for a game that I think kind of was a bit iffy and a bit ooh and ah every now and again. I, I think the boss fights were some of the better parts of the game, although some of them weren't particularly fun. The glutton was a bit weird, but I like a cool concept, and then you've got like the, the thing you fight in Dryfield, just 
just strolls down the road like nothing's ever happened. Making elephant noises that we were talking about the same one. Yeah, just like <laughs> crazy. Like I, I thought like the developers must have been on something when they made some of these bosses. Um, as far as enemies go, there's a, there's some such cool stuff in one and two, but the one that always stands out to me is just the first boss stranger you come up against the reveal for it, uh, the setup in the Acropolis tower, and then the little cinematic that plays before the quick fight. Mm -hmm. um, super effective, super quick, really creepy when you're a kid. Um, mm. And also super silly. It's like all these great things kind of combined in one because it makes a horse noise after going through all the scary stuff. <laughs> yes. um, and But it just looks cool. It's just a neat mm. concept. Like that whole thing is super neat. So like that's always stuck out to me. Like there's some great stuff in the series but like that first little intro with the boss stranger is just cool like it's like good you know that one ups the rat like like oh right. shit's getting real i think that's one of the things that I've, i i i will give the developers like some credit for like trying to design some of these because of course a lot of these enemies are based upon certain types of like animals and such that we obviously know and they're kind of mutated from it and so trying to like kind of make them familiar yet completely alien um, you know, I think for a lot of, for a lot of the regular enemies, they did. They, I think, especially in the first game, I think they did a pretty good job of like you could kind of see what they were more more or less, and it kind of made sense. But obviously, they're completely horrifically mutated from whatever they thought you thought they were. But you can still kind of see it. Yeah. And you, you, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Um. But does like what you guys were saying with the design, the first one, I love them. But I have a gripe with the game, especially number two. There was one enemy. That has made me rage quit more than once. It's those stupid slugs mm. in combination with the cameras that shoot you and blind you and confuse you. I, I, it's so rage inducing. The slugs that you cannot kill without any fire nut end up yes. using up all your MP and then you're blind and confused. Oh my god. I, yeah, there were there were a couple real horror rooms in the in the in the base and some of the camera angles also did not help this either. They really didn't. Um, <laughs> oh, was, some crap. of it was was setting up the player to fail. Um especially like yeah, again, like you go through the game. I've got no problem with a game that decides to change up some gameplay mechanics in battle as you go. Like so many games have done this really well. Um, RPGs especially, you know, you, you you can't just brute force everything. You've got to kind of go from different tacks for different types of enemies. But there's a way of introducing that, that it's not just completely alien and doesn't ambush the player. Um, and again, yeah, the slugs, I think, are a good option, uh, uh, you know, good example of that, that once you realize what the hell you've got to do, you may already be dead. Um, and the cameras as well are, like, not fun. When you're having to fight them and, like, some of the guards around, uh, ugh, not good. Uh, yeah, let's, let's not focus. forget. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. But, oh, I was going to say, let's not forget the giant speakers that uh, just destroy yes. any ability for you to do anything with any parasite powers. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, in the, in the basement. And then, and then there's, there's a boss. Yes, there's boss fight. And then, yeah, the, all the guards and stuff. Yeah, like, there's a oh. lot of nasty shit at the back end of that game. Like, it's yeah, it's pretty unpleasant. Like, I managed to kind of puzzle my way through a lot of it and realize what was happening very early on. And, and like, fortunately, like, with the speakers, I went down to that room beforehand and I kind of seen them. Um, so I realized that like, once shit was going, I was like, oh, it must be those. Kill them immediately. Um, but I can definitely understand people just not miss, not understanding and just getting just, just just like what the hell is going and being so frustrated at not realizing what's going on. I can definitely see that happen. When you just watch your MP just drain like that, it's like, oh, it's so frustrating. And you don't like to me, I didn't realize it was the speakers. So I just saw my H MP at zero. And I'm like, oh, cool. All right. Yeah, no, I, 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 I realized like immediately. And I was like, thank God for that. I couldn't <laughs> imagine a world where I didn't realize this, especially because then you've got the boss fight not long afterwards yeah. where there's speakers involved. And that's not a fun fight. There's one of the golem soldiers. I cannot remember which one because the rooks are the dudes that shoot. Mm -hmm. But it's the invisible ones. Yes. And two, they right? have, yeah, in two, they have like a knockdown state that lasts maybe like a second. You can damage them just a little bit. And mm -hmm. then they go back to being invisible and you can't hit them. Mm -hmm. They pop out and you get about like a split second and then they'll go ahead and they'll grapple you and hit you. So you just end up like eating tons of these hits in the second one. Just in, and they only can pop up like four times. Yeah, it's like, tedious. Man. It's pretty. It's pretty tedious. Huge like pain you, in the ass. Yeah, you basically got like just sit in a corner and just aim a gun and wait, which is not exactly glamorous. Yeah, it works, but like that's you know again, 
I'm all for like having these kind of more ambushy enemies, but there's a way of implementing them into your games that it isn't just like a complete chore and you have to basically corner camp in order to defeat them. You should be encouraging that as a player. Yes, you know, um, oh, sorry, real quick. Um, I, I don't know which one of you said it though or mentioned it, but um, like the camera angles, I forgot yeah. to point this out in the previous questions though, but yeah, the angles actually kind of sucked for um, Parasite Eve 2 in certain yeah. stages. Especially oh, yeah. when you try to use um the new lockout system, which is better and worse depending on your situation. Mm. Compared to I mean, the a, first game. You could argue that's a that's a nice love letter and homage to the original Resident Evil's terrible camera angles. But yeah, it's it's it, it yeah, it, it died a death, and thank God. That's the best way to describe that aiming system. It is both better and worse at the same time. Yeah, it's in, it's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like you couldn't, like, if you were aiming at something that you didn't, you weren't always technically aiming at it. Mm. And, like, when you would try to shoot some of the enemies, it just seemed like where you were looking didn't, you weren't actually shooting there. So no, it, kinda, it, it got kind of annoying after a while. Yeah, it was very funky. And and I will say, I, I love that game to death, but I will say when you're tracking faster enemies, uh, like the little goblin dudes who kind of jump around, I, I cannot remember what they're called. Um, your crosshair will lag a little bit behind them. So if you let off a burst with an M4 or any kind of weapon where, you know, like the shotgun where you have to pump between your shots, uh, you're stuck yeah. looking and you're open, like, completely, which is, like, it sucks. I mean, I'm one of those people that's like, hey, it's the design of the game, I dig it, but it also just, like, kind of sucks. Like, mm -hmm. Okay, I guess we're talking about bad song. Are we talk about bad song, like, enemy? Uh, honestly, let's be real here. Those freaking camel dudes and um, Parasite Eve two chasers, mm -hmm. the most beautifully ugly creatures ever. They're the best one. <laughs> Don't at me. You know what? I was I was playing Parasite Eve two. I remember when I was playing it. It was really late and it was on a weekend when I was a kid, and um, that thing popped out of the fence after you know dry fields empty. That thing oh, popped yeah. over the fence and went woo, and I was like, "Yep, I'm shutting this off." And I went to bed <laughs> immediately. I was like, "I'm done." Cool. That was weird and freaky. It has a human face. I'm out. Yeah, why the long face, right? Uh, dude, why the seriously, long it scared face? Me. <laughs> it, 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 like the weirdest thing scared me, and that thing scared the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah, very reason very scary. Shit. This, this again, there's some horrific stuff. It's, its yeah. face is like it's just it's like what in the blue hell? It really is. Uh, like it stretched a human face over a horse's head. It's pretty yeah. creepy. Uh, imagine uh, that thing standing over you at night, like watching you. Are you nice. sleeping yet? Hey, Thanks, man. I was planning on getting some rest tonight, but I appreciate it. I am. <laughs> uh, da, da, da. Sorry, are we done with this question? Any more input? Nope. Going once. Mm. One, twice. Well. Go ahead. I mean, <laughs> I haven't played. I, it's been a long time since I played the first game, so the only enemy I ever remember is like that. I think like that dog that turns in the first one was really creepy the kerberos yeah yeah wasn't that someone's pet and it turned into that that three-headed yeah yes yeah and i felt really bad for the, that girl because her dog because we had to kill her dog <laughs> and i think she tried to kill me first fuck it right <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah but yeah that's i don't know but yeah that's like the one enemy i always i remember it's been a really long time since I played it. I forget what, what like, what, like, Brandel, you played the first game, right? And what enemy you trying, um, trying to look for? Like, what was, like, one of the more annoying enemies from the first game? Uh, more annoying enemy than the first game. Crap. On top of my head, I cannot think of it right away. There was there was like spider dudes like in the like in the sewers and so there's oh yeah seen. I remember the sewers I hated it because it was a maze. Oh yeah, that's true. Mm. I actually, was... I think I had I actually found one of the strategy guides for Parasite Eve one, so that's how I got out. Oh, they literally call spiders. Um, they're they're the common enemies. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, my my memory of of of, game, of anyways is just tainted by the Chrysler Tower and just some of the shit you got to fight in there. It's just oh, yeah. like, a lot of it. Yeah. A lot of it's just reskins of like enemies you've seen previously, but just given a ton of new 
basically a ton of health and a ton of attack power but like it, it's mm. hard not to think of horrendous enemies some of them are just so cruel they just hit you like you can't really dodge it and then you just hit by status ailments of all kinds of horrendousness um yeah many many painful memories yeah has anyone ever actually made it all the way to the top yeah yeah i did um it took me a while i think like my run of the tower was actually longer than the main game yeah. which is incredible yeah um, it's literally an example of it depends on you the player and how well you do as you progress because it could be shorter or longer yeah the problem was um, i had to like completely redo my entire equipment setup because it, it was good for the campaign and the general main game but once you get to the tower it's just its own beast and you just have to start again yeah. and like, like, what you've uh, got is probably not good enough and you just have to completely just start again it's, yeah it's kind of, it's kind i of think cool. that i think that and i think there was another experience next game that i got star ocean where i had to buy a guide to at least know what's the best stuff to get I was tempted to do that, but I was like, this is a blind series. Let's just rock and roll and see what I can work out. We made yeah, it. but we made it. with an RPG, I feel like it's okay to cheat a bit because there's so much to it. The, graphic, was, yeah. the RPG was terrible. I thought it was trash. <laughs> I thought it was horrendously terrible, but hey. Anyways. Um, big, big shout out to the T-Rex that shoots fire. That's, um, that's yes. definitely one of those things that was like, mmm, like... Dinosaur fire museum oh, fire. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Dino it. Crisis wishes it had thought of this. <laughs> yeah. Um, three is this right? Oh wait. Mm, oh, yeah. Why did you? Um, mm. Oops. <laughs> Moving on. Next question. Bad enough talking about third birthday. Come on. <laughs> I feel like third birthday is just going to keep popping up at the end of every single one of these topics. I can just sense it. <laughs> yeah. Pre pretty much. Pretty much. Oh well, it's going to get better from here, man. Question number five. <laughs> Fair. Oh my god. How do you feel about the overall story and quality of the Parasite E franchise? How long do we have? No. Um, <laughs> That's pretty much the rest of our talk now, I think. Well, I, I, I mean, the good thing I had personally is that I have a bit of a chemistry and biology sort of semi background. Um, so, with a lot of like the minute or minutiae of the, the, the plot and story of like how the mitochondria are working and like how it actually works, like I kind of got it. Although I remember having some definite difficulty in kind of translating that onto a YouTube video and kind of explaining to people who don't have that sort of background as to what exactly is going on. I was just like, look, TLDR, look, this creates energy and like it's being exploited. And that's all you really need to know. Like you can go really head deep into the plot of these games on like that sort of stuff going on um, if you want, but you don't have to, but it, it definitely helps. The problem is, is that the game just the story just gets wacky as you go because you've obviously got these creatures that have first been made by accident by you know all the stuff going on. Then you get to the second game where they're being manufactured, and like it, it's, I think it was a it's a plot that's very easy to kind of lose control over, um, and you feel like you constantly have to revisit things that have gone on to kind of keep it making sense. And I've gone through games of complicated plots that I've not had a problem with at all um so like that's definitely saying something past like eve like i'm all for ambition but like there comes a point where you just confuse the player and if you confuse the player on a plot like they're not going to play your game they're just going to put it down and say nope not for me brother um, yeah. i'm gonna be that, that guy was... i think the story is kind of shit like i enjoy the game i have a good time with it and the story is like okay in places but i, I think, think i think good I... I think a lot of the characters in like the, characters. especially in the first, I think a lot of the characters I quite enjoyed. Um, I was a huge, you know, I, like I especially, um, I enjoyed Maida. Um, I really, really liked, um, oh, what is his name? Uh, it's going to sound terrible in 2021, but the black guy. Oh, Daniel. Her partner. Daniel, that's it, Daniel. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't think of his name. I, I, I really enjoyed it because in my first phase, I actually like tried doing voices just for the hell of it for all these characters. And like, he went super like low and deep. It was like hilarious. Yeah. But I think it was, it was really cool. And then he gets his moment at the very end of the game as well, which I won't spoil for Ren because hmm. I don't want to. Uh, yeah. But I thought that was really awesome. But yeah, story wise, like, if you're not paying attention and almost taking notes, like, it could just totally pass you by. And that's, you know, I'm okay for ambition. But there was a point where number two just turned into white noise at some point. It was just like it was yeah. so hard to get oh, back into it. Oh, it's mm -hmm. the best. Yeah, it's so crazy. It's so and, nuts. 
Mm. No, that I agree with though. Like honestly, in terms of structure though, one was the best one in terms of both the story and characters. Two, yeah, because it's Aya, more condensed. With two, Aya was the strongest um point of the game, and maybe some story elements within within two though. Like that was the best part though. The cat side characters though, uh, mileage would vary. You mean, you mean Kyle's not the best character in the game? No, I think all right. I think it's time we discuss Kyle Madigan. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's about time we get, discuss him. Well, there's two things Kyle, I'm going to discuss, though. But let's, oh, what's if, if I may say, before we get into Kyle, <clears throat> the part where I got way back into Parasite Eve 2, the first time I was playing it, I was like, all right, this is dumb. This is lab manufacturing monsters. Like, this is very, like, cut paste Resident Evil kind of stuff. And then you get to the Neo arc. And mm-hmm. people, and there's like those plaques that you're reading. It's like, you could be this thing. And you go, oh, now I'm totally back in because this is ridiculous. Yeah, this I, I will say the silliest thing on the planet. I will, I will say there are a couple of files and there's like a couple of like diaries in the base of like these mm. people and the researchers and like if you have kind of zoned out a lot of the story, you start reading them and like their accounts of what's going on and like obviously some of them are horrified and thinking, is this really great? And then you've got the one guy who thinks this great and then he infected himself and you fight him as a mini boss and all that sort of stuff. Except there's like, there's so many plot lines that suddenly, um, because, correct me if I'm wrong, um, the researcher like infects or like hits Aya and is like shown to like infect with something and then the plot on it is just never picked up again. It's just yeah, like correct. completely abandoned. I'm like, what? It's this just mit- mitochondria solved it. Shut up. <laughs> the power <laughs> like, cell, man. And it feels like I'm pretty sure that was not the only plot line in two, which was begun and then just, oh. Um, but I remember that sticking out heavily. Like the researcher was cool. His diary and reading it was like awesome. But then he like infects you with something, and it's not a big deal. And then and then within ten minutes, it's like, what what? infection what big dude hit you i don't know what you're talking about uh, yeah. i think the main theme and all of that has a lot of potential to it and uh, uh black Shadow, because you said you had like a little bit of a background in this like what reading the notes and things like that the uh the parasitic nature of like actual mito- mitochondria sounded like so interesting and stuff is that actually accurate in any way or is that just like bullshit the game's putting um it's it's jeez oh, i remember both. i remember it's a bit of both, yeah. Like okay, there is okay. there is some scientific especially in the first game, like a lot of the stuff that it's talking about, like there is scientific basis for like how mitochondria sort of work and how they function, but they have been romanticized, I think is probably the word I would best use to describe the game. The um creator, like the author of the original Parasite Eve, the book, not the game, um, mm-hmm. he is actually a pharmacologist, so like he Yeah. Yes. So he has the knowledge of this stuff, so which is why he uses it as a base for a thing while adding yeah. in his, you know, the bullshit. There's, 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 there's no way you could bullshit your way through this stuff if you didn't have at least some knowledge or some source material to go yeah. for. There's no way. Like, I yeah. completely believe. But yeah, obviously the, the developers are like, okay, we're just going to use what he says. And we're like, well, tinker with some stuff. You know, creative license, we'll go with it. So you can see, see yeah, like, on a base level, like what's going on kind of makes sense. But it does get more and more ridiculous as you go. And then by the time of two, it's like, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> uh, well, no, yeah, because mitochondria become the, the midichlorians of the Parasite Eve universe. Okay. It's just magical space powers. Yeah. Like, that's... Mm. Well, yeah, or mind jacking abilities. Yeah, exactly. It gives you craziness. Mm. Although, that wasn't even a, the uh, Magikondria stuff wasn't even a um, factor in um, three, I don't think. So, like, that's his own bullshit there. But that's here there. That's here to say. But, um, mm. continue. Yeah. It's something that it helped if you kind of understood what was going on. It did help a bit, but like it definitely wasn't necessary. But yeah, by the time you get to two, it's like it's there. If you get it, great. If you don't, it's like don't worry about it. Which is a bit of a shame. I kind of like it with one. It was like it was an appeal to kind of try and understand what's going on. So you know, I appreciate a bit more. I can understand people wouldn't. So that's something I wanted to touch on that that you had said. Black Shadow was the the story. I think the IP was a little too smart for what they were trying to push it as. Mm. Because if, if you don't really have uh, somewhat of an understanding, you can't get lost in the story and you lose interest. And then it becomes, you know, you're focused on combat. But it does, the franchise kind of goes downhill from one because they tried to throw so many different things into the sequels to make yeah. it more appealing to gamers. They started kind of pandering out. Yeah, I think, I, I think, yeah. Content then, so. Yeah. One was kind of nerdy. But it was nerdy to an extent that it wasn't off-putting. 
2 kind of like took what was already kind of a bit wacky in the first game, chucked in a road of other elements and just said, make of it what you will. I hope right. you guys understand. Oh, by the way, Moondor puzzle, get fucked. <laughs> it pretty much was how the game worked in a nutshell. Yeah, oh, plot -wise. And one thing I want to add, um, the the author, he also co-written the um the first game, so like that would explain some of its you know yeah. themes as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm very glad. Forward, I, I if if they hadn't done that, like I think I'm not even sure we would have seen the second or third game. Like you needed some kind of understanding. It would be a complete mess. So yeah, thank God, That's thank sense. God for that. Right. Yeah. Um, who wants to start then? With we do have to we do have to talk about Kyle. Like, we have no choice. Oh my god. Uh, I'll, I'll let you guys talk about him, because I'm going to see my energy for um what they did in the, in the third game for mm. Io. Mm. I don't even know where to start with Kyle, to be honest. <laughs> There's so much. It's well, he's a, a dude. Weird... He's a guy. Uh, he says he's someone he's not, and then he, like, mock betrays you, and then mock double crosses you? Question mark? And then I don't like, know. He he was straight get, up going to married. shoot you. He was straight up going to shoot you when you were passed out in that motel room. And then, oh, we're not. Oh, it's fine. We're not going to talk about that. Nope. It was completely ignored. And then he does like. Sh and then the end sequence of two happens. The, the story of Kyle is like. <laughs> it, it felt like they had a lot of different ideas of what they wanted to do, and then they were they got to the point where they were supposed to streamline it into a conscience throughout the series and then there was a fire alarm at the at the headquarters they all had to leave outside uh they came back ran out of time for the day and just said meh it'll be fine wait did i hear that right did someone say they get he they get married in three? Oh god did someone say that um that's my understanding yeah oh, uh, oh no uh, I don't what? Remember. It's such, I, then again, I don't a, remember most of the story. He's just such a nothing of a character that it just I ugh, like they try yeah, to make I, Kyle. I believe that's. Something. I think I think that's how it starts. Is like it's like the wedding, isn't it? I'm thinking that's how the game starts. My I could be wrong. Um, oh, they're about yeah. to be yeah. wed. Yeah, time. they're about to get married, oh. and then all the shit goes on, and then the first yeah. and then the game starts. Yeah, I guess shot up the shit, but she kills the SWAT team and all that jazz and yada yada. So yeah, um, yeah. they were about to get married. They banged. Uh, they, I think they had a child or no 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 they didn't. No, they adopted. Uh, um, yeah, thingy. Mm hmm. So uh, yeah, they were about to get married, and nobody like that, as far as I'm concerned. Mm. But yeah, it 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 felt like a it was like a stream of consciousness that kind of like was horrendously unfiltered in the second game, like. You know, you've got to have these side characters. I'm cool with that. But he's like, yeah, first he went to kill you. And well, first he was like lying to you. Then he was going to kill you. And then you set him on fire. And it was like, oh, actually, I could get to like you. Um, you work together. He then mock betrays you, double crosses. And he then dies at a point as well. Yeah, he, he, he should have died. Like, without fucking question, he was dead. I, it's, it's absurd. You know, it's like, how thick of a plot armor does this man have? Yeah, saving yeah, grace. I uh, love there. That's why. Uh, saving grace for Kyle. Pistol, really good crit rate. So I don't know. Yeah, he's. I he's agree with that. His, yeah, I agree with that. that. That's that's his one saving grace. Yeah, but yeah, he it's, any it's, crits. Yeah, but um, unfortunately, I think as an execution plot wise, I've. Uh, oh, you could take him out of yeah. the game, and you would miss nothing. Yeah, which is which is a real shame because there's some cool characters, especially in the, with the first games. I think some of the side characters are really, really cool and awesome. And even the second game, there's some fun ones to be had. You know, like your your second like protagonist, basically, or the second most pers important person in the game. And yet he kind of doesn't really fulfill much of a role. He's just kind of there. And then suddenly it's crazy important he's there and then it's not. I'm just like, well... <laughs> It's so weird. It's just so mismanaged. Mm. It's a great show. It's a really, really great show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he 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 looks like a rejected Final Fantasy character at a point. Like he looks like someone who could have been an eight, like straight up. Well, I mean, considering that with the gun blade from eight in there, like yeah, mm -hmm. like yeah. I mean, there's also that. <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah, it's such a shame. Like, what they should have done is take out Kyle Madigan and just put back put Rupert in. Rupert was so he yeah. had so much promise at the start of the game. Mm -hmm. This complete badass, and he gets injured, and that's it. Yeah. Done. You know, why not even have Pierce in for a little bit? You know, at least he was a bit of comic relief. No, you've got like this whole Kyle thing, and it's just like, 
Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so much nothing. Yeah, what a what a horrendous say. And even Gary Douglas was kind of cool, you know. Gary's the best. <laughs> Gary reminds me of my grandfather, but more crazy. It's great. <laughs> Is that bad for the gra- Gary or grandfather? I don't know. <laughs> I can't work it yes. Out. Yep, got all these guns and a dog and a fake leg and cool. Yep. <laughs> bye America. bye bye. Neato. Kind of love it. What a guy. All right then. Uh. All right, so are we done with talking about Kyle? It's it's I so weird so. because that conversation is just going to go nowhere because like there's it, it there's so much to talk about him, but nothing at the same time. Yeah, right. It's right. it's kind of fitting, isn't it? It's kind of fitting. <laughs> <laughs> it's everything his character was. Mm. Is, nothing. I don't know anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty well. Um. All right. Your ideal desire for a new parasite Eve experience. What do you think should be improved, cut, etc. Oh, um. Honestly, this. Okay, if it's, let's say it's talking about like a remake or something like that, right? Like, yeah. how many of you guys play Final Fantasy VII remake? Just started it. I just started. It. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the shit yeah. out of it. Okay, so like, y- y- obviously, you know the the basis of this gameplay, right? With the ATB arm um, charges and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that would be a good basis for Parasite Eve. Like, have complete free motion. You no, know, you have guns or whatever, right? So just obviously start busting caps and um and monsters' butts or whatever, right? But have like the ATP type system where either you um you enter a menu, it pauses everything and allows you to like cycle through the menu, or have quick selection um via um the little input thing on um, menu. I think um that would be a good basis for like a fine um uh, sorry press a Eve um like your remake. Yeah, as and, long as they keep the ATV, I don't think I will add mine there. Yeah. Remember, but also yeah. give us the powers from two like imp- like the powers um from two and put it into one, I think that would be nice, to be honest. Remember yeah. this so what st- it... this style is not superior, it's different. Shut up, Ren. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, would it just be a sequel to the book or just new? Yeah, it's a sequel, duh. Obviously, because I mean we were making the first game. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm definitely you know, I've only played an hour of the new Final Fantasy Seven. I'm way late on the train. Um, but Man, that would be a really cool system. You tweak it for a shooter, and yeah, uh, yeah. or you know, like just enough, and you add that ATB kind of like slow down everything and select your stuff, Kingdom Hearts style kind of active combat, whatever. Like, yeah, like that's awesome. And you do it in Unreal. I mean, that would be amazing. I I don't understand why people just flat out would hate this idea unless they're just like turn-based purists and uh, i like turn-based but still I, I think logically speaking if they were to tweak this and make it right that would be the next logical step to go mm. yeah like okay so like things like say final fantasy right it's natural progression is going away from turn-based honestly makes sense because you see the flashy stuff that you see on screen with some of these cutscenes or hell um the ever children movie for fr7 like, because of that movie, they wanted to bring Final Fantasy into that realm as close as possible, and they did it in other, right? So I think it's, mm. I think it would be fair for um, Parasite Eve to go a little bit more into, like, you know, the modern era of um, gaming and, like, give us more free reign while also keeping things that were, you know, identical to what made the original, you know, amazing. Just like how Dang. Final Fantasy VII did it. Yeah, yeah give I, me- I was very surprised. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I, I was gonna say, give me crazy like parasite powers. Like, I, I want to see that all in real time and like uh, displayed with all these special effects, particle effects, stuff breaking down the environment, like crackling. That'd be awesome. Mm. Yeah, I was but... very surprised when the ATB system worked as well as it did because I had a shit ton of doubts when it was first like being talked about and stuff. And man, just to like repurpose that for par- for a new parasite Eve, like. Yeah, fuck yeah, just, you know, let's get rid of Kyle, and you know what, uh, huh. I think we could have a good Parasite Eve. Huh. I mean, it's not like turn base is dead, though, they still do it for Dragon Quest. I mean, that's been working I mean, that's... for, like, more than 30 years. Yeah, no, that's not the thing, though, like, no, we're saying turn base is, like, you know, not a bad thing, though, but certain things, like, certain series should move past that, you know? Like, it's fine yeah. with Persona, it's fine with Dragon Quest, but Final Fantasy proven that, you know, it's probably for the best if it know continues on with the more action rpg route because yeah, again yeah. like final fantasy 7 is like the part with the perfect blend of you know old and new at least the original yeah. and new mechanics yeah yep. it's, it's had te- it's even heat tv problems for a few years you know which is always going to be but like it's it's kind of in a faster and more you know short attention span sort of environment and people want to see a lot of fa- you know fancy flashy graphics 
Um, you know, I think something like Parasite Eve would certainly, yeah, definitely benefit from a system like that. I, I, I'm trying to think of something that would work alternatively, but like, it seems pretty good. A uh, card battler. <laughs> Mega Man um, Battle Network? Yeah, yeah, Mega Man Battle Network and Parasite Eve. And to me, I don't. I just don't think people have the patience for turn based anymore. Like I, I, I can play them. I can enjoy them, but I just don't think that would like hit the market like they want to. You know, yeah, especially it's still actually, selling though. Yeah, I, yeah, I but like especially say. after the the PS3 era, you know, people were onto shooters and whatnot. So like, you know, patience is no longer a key. It's all about going in, getting out type, type of deal. Yes. Yeah, but I don't think trying to get into a market that doesn't won't play it isn't the right idea. Just stay oh, with I mean. You. That happens a lot, so yeah. And Square Enix yeah. is just as guilty with that. But for better yeah. or worse, unfortunately, it's, yeah, it's a bit like, passe now. So. I feel like the only reason Dragon Quest stayed turn based is because of Yuji Hori, because he wants to keep the series, the because he's so dedicated to the series staying turn based. Yeah, he's a purist, basically. It's gonna be. It would be different to see <laughs> this. Uh, change a little bit because when you do you think about you know the active turn-based system it's the same thing like your adventure stops there's some cinematic and then there's a backdrop and then you're fighting there you know like this what what parasite eve did when it first came out was the battle starts right where you are you know there was just this quick thing you know everything turned white and then you just started fighting to see that like you said, like rival what Final Fantasy VII is doing, that would be amazing because people would. They do want that quick action. They want to be able to just jump right in and, and start fighting. So mm -hmm. that that would be kind of cool to see that. It's refreshing all in all. Like just it's time for a little bit of a change. Mm -hmm. in, in a way, Parasite Eve is kind of like the predecessor to the ATB system. Mm -hmm. Just because like you can see the elements that they pulled from it and to like I could be completely wrong with that, but just like it I can see like the steps from there to what we have now with the Final Fantasy VII remake. I could have sworn the first. Good. Oh, good. Uh, real quick, it's, like, it's the first game I could think of that have like this dynamic ATB. No, yeah. it does not turn based. So like, you own something there. Didn't they mention something about uh, Parasite Eve One being based on like Final Fantasy VIII's engine? Um, yeah, it's the engine that was used from like what from seven, eight, nine, whenever. Yes, uh, that, that yeah, time period. Same engine, yeah. Yeah, I just find but that also, like fascinating, in my opinion. But, you, definitely, um, also, you can definitely see bits of it here and there. Like, you can definitely feel it, I think, from time to time. Yeah. Let's... Also, and... sorry, real quick, a little trivia note as well. Um, It was actually going to be Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, um, that's but... what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Originally, they wanted Final Fantasy VII in a New York setting, so that's no. kind of where Parasite Eve comes from. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh. Cloud and Barry are going to be detectives. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that would have been yeah. cool. So they just gender bent Cloud and turned, their, turned him into Aya. Holy shit, you're right, because both of them blonde and blue eyes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and a lot of the supporting characters in the first one are just Final Fantasy VII characters. There yeah. was a lot of it. Yeah. Daniel, 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 yeah. Daniel, yeah. yeah. I, I Holy shit. Up Barrett. That, yeah. that just took me aback. What? I, yeah, I see it. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. almost yeah. like Devil May Cry, Tony Resident Evil 4, but like five years early. It's frightening, it's, isn't it? It's yeah. there. I see it. And it's, I can't not now. <laughs> Yeah, that, oh, that, yeah, that tripped me out the first time I heard about that. I'm like, there's some similarities here with these characters and Final Fantasy VII. So I'm like, there's got to be a distinction. And then I heard about everything you guys were talking about. And I'm like, holy shit, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to see this game the same again now. Me neither. <laughs> I'm totally indoctrinated now. I mean, it doesn't help shot. that you get a gun blade. Yeah. <laughs> I, <ain't laughs> I, I will say... I might be unpopular here, but I will say I probably prefer Aya to Cloud, but that's just me being probably really unpopular, so... Uh, well... I, I'm saying they're not the same character, really, because, I mean, even when be real here, Cloud been through a lot worse shit than Aya's ever been through. Let's yes. be honest. It was Comatose twice. Coma Cloud doesn't know who he is anyway, so it's fine. I agree. Exactly. Comatose, Amnesia, Geo Stigma, Damn. everything. Getting cocked really I, hard. I mean, he's been through so much. <laughs> <laughs> so much. Tree twice, twice, I might add. Cause he lost two in it. Oh, okay. What a, what a miserable God, existence. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's too funny. Oh, uh, let's see. Let me let me go back to the question real quick. Well, yeah, everything we said here is like um everything we said here is like just pretty much like on point. Like if they 
actually went to like the Final Fantasy 7 remake uh sort of style then I would sort of like it a lot and I think it fits for like a shooting type element to see you know parasite energy and putting it into like bullets or like crafting things like in real time uh, that'd be pretty sweet uh the only thing that i hope for is that obviously they fine tune it enough to be good because i don't think they really can have an opportunity to strike out again after third birthday i think they have to make sure they nail this one for sure uh and i know they've been talking about like hey parasite eve we don't want it to die we definitely want it to come back someday uh if you guys were like sort of guesstimating here uh, when do you think the time is perfect for them to do like Parasite Eve after Final Fantasy Part Two for Seven? Honestly, you no. Know, the obvious answer would be now, though. But you no, know, given that we're in, coming into a new generation, though, I think you should do it like after to get familiar with the new tools and whatnot. Because think about it, like imagine the rat scene in like the Unreal Five or whatever, right? You know, that yeah, would look disgusting. Yeah, yeah. 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 body horror in in Unreal would be awesome. Unreal. <laughs> Unreal. Unreal. Unreal prediction. Exactly. Next E three. We're gonna hear it. There's my prediction. Oh, that that that's that's, that's my hot take. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's a game that I think would ultimately it would live or die on how battle goes. In it, yeah. I think that it would a hundred percent live or die on its battle system. If it wasn't any good, like it would but die a complete death. Um, so yeah, they'd have to nail it. Mm-hmm. Or just go to the gotcha market. It's always that. It's always the backup. Uh, oh jesus uh, if i see a trailer for parasite eve and it turns out to be a pachinko machine i'm done i'm out i am <laughs> taking a yeah. out. i am yeah, taking a bat to someone's knees you, <laughs> i am taking a bat to someone's knees if i see that holy fuck no <laughs> thankfully they're not konami so hopefully we won't see that okay well, i mean i'll say they're not even better when it comes to the, the pachinko stuff so like don't don't say that <laughs> but um are, are we finished here like any more thoughts yeah i think on this one yeah Actually, I got um two questions or so bonus questions that relation to Parasite Eve. One, have you, have you guys seen the movie? No. Oh my god! I just no. found out about it. Yeah, I yeah. didn't even know there was a movie. Yeah, I forgot to watch it before this podcast. I wish I did though. But no, yeah, like there's a movie, and I don't think it is in relation to like the book or the game. It's like a standalone ish type thing. But it, it came out after the book and before the game. I, so I think it's like before the, the game. Evil movies. No, um, well, in the no, in it's made the by Japanese movie. people, it's made by Japanese people. Um, it's decent from what I've um, been told, but it's nothing like, like, nothing like the games if you're expecting it to be like the games. So, so is yeah. it like an adaptation yeah. of the novel? Yeah. I, don't, I don't, I know, I don't think it is. I think it's on its own standalone type, um, book. I'm sorry, not book, but um, it movie. has some like kind of key sort of plot concepts, like yes. from those, it, it happens to be in the same, but yeah, like mitochondria, yeah, basically. Yeah, but that's really about a horror it. movie, so oh, it looks cool. Metachlorians. Yep. I'm watching this tonight. Sweet. Uh, and another thing, too. Um, what is your favorite moment from from all the games? Like, either um, pick one scene that you remember the most or that comes to your head. Jeez. Um, for, honestly, for me, it would be the Opera House. Like, uh, I have an easy one because, like, it's just like, because it was my first experience, like we talked earlier. It's just like the people exploding into fire and how bad that fucked me up. It's just, it left such an impression that I actually just get like nostalgic joy when I play the first one now. So it's mm. like, that that's my scene. It it's, yeah. might I mean, be an I, easy I, answer, I, but that's that's what it is. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, yeah, I don't I've, disagree. Yeah. I've said many, many times horror mutant baby, and I will probably stand by that. Um, but like, there's a lot of cool visuals, you know, again, the opera house is definitely very notable. Uh, like the, the chariot, um, fight boss fight you have in like the first yes. game is, is very, very cool. I think it's often forgotten about, I think it's a you know, fighting in a flaming chariot in a boss fight. I mean, yeah, like, ghost that's rider. Fucking cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Like, how can you not like that? Uh, I'm not going to lie when the, when the theme kicks in in the FMVs in the first and the second game, like the first one, uh, like when you boot up the game and it's doing the Squaresoft logo and all that, and the theme kicks mm -hmm. in, um, that's just like, I, I just hear that in my head all the time. Like that, anytime I think about Parasite Eve, like the first thing is like the that pumping Parasite Eve theme, and it's just yeah, yeah, it's a basically very good show. Yeah, I've forgotten about it. it yeah, banger, really banger. Yeah, 
I, good. I said that when I played it, I'm like, this intro is phenomenal. Like, I, I don't know how, I, I don't know how you could just play that game and not think of the intro once it finally pops up because the music is just pumping and then they keep changing due to the mitochondria and everything. And it's kind of mm -hmm. like super plot relevant too once it's playing. So it's one of those things where I, I play this game and I'm not going to forget that main theme. Yeah, the, the OST is, I think, is a very, very often overlooked part of uh, Parasite Eve, especially in the, I can't say for the first game, but like in the first two, um, yeah, but the opening for the, 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 the opening scene and like the, the opening theme is fantastic. And the first one's got lots of iconic stuff going on. Um, yeah, really, really good stuff. Um, you know, just even the theme of just like when you're like going around, you know, in the New York, just like in the, the, the hub map and just listening to that like is amazing and also i will definitely put a huge shout out to the music um in the police department uh i forget its name which makes you really annoyed but uh, like, i know you're talking about i think the remix yeah, the remix set for the third birthday it and it's yeah. it's a banger in third birthday i love that track <laughs> yeah i forget what it's called um but like it's it's just a fantastic theme and like i could i i i could sleep i could fall asleep to that theme Hey, not probably not the later versions, but the one in first game. I, I will look it up because um, I need to um, remember what the hell this is called. Oh yeah, other thing memorable about two, all of the Coca Cola product placement. Oh yeah, oh, I right. saw that. Yeah, Coca -Cola you're right. Coca Cola is the um, powerhouse cell of freaking uh, medical. <laughs> it is yes. so insane. Yes. You have to you have to use a Coca Cola magnet to progress. It is yeah. so insane. It's the best healing item in the game. You do so Coca Cola and. <laughs> they country. earned their money. I'm sure it was one million. To be fair, product placement isn't something out of place for a square soft game. Oh, or oh, oh, oh nice we're not talking about it being out of place though, but it's just funny like, to see it everywhere. It's just everything is coat. Like you're talking to that police officer at the beginning of the Acropolis Tower, and the entire screen is taken up by a Coca Cola menu. Yes, it it Perhaps. is kind of. I couldn't help but notice that I'm like, this is a little bit OTT, but hey. Oh, so I looked there it up. Needed... Out of phase is the name of the track. That's there the needed one. to yeah. be somebody in the background just going drink coke like every you know <laughs> few minutes I forgot about the coke magnet shit that's that's funny <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah that's so absurd so absurd oh man just... Aya, you need some healing have an ice cold coca-cola mm, so refreshing i'm i'm I, i'm amazed given like some of like the art style in the first game there should have been some parody for the second game with her just like holding some coke into like some ridiculous poses like i i had a dug it i had a dug it yeah right <sighs> God. yeah that was a missed opportunity but um yeah. anyway it would have brought a new a new meaning to the meet to, to thirsty people right yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, moving on i guess yeah um, one thing i want to point out though actually um like the you mentioned that people don't appreciate the soundtrack enough i that'd, that'd be a shame that's true though because it literally makes up the identity of parasite because since mm. there's no voice acting the music you know yes it's pretty Paris. much it's Karen. Karen. Yeah, so like, you know, yeah, give it more appreciation. But um, yeah, that, that's all I got left. All right, so I guess right. we can move on to the second segment of the podcast. This will be about Finally. more general questions. Um, yeah. We're going to steamroll through some of these. It's about like survival horror RPGs in general. Uh, number seven is like agree or disagree. Uh, do you feel like grinding in a survival horror RPG makes the game less enjoyable? Or do you think it's more enjoyable as an experience? I think everybody knows my opinion on this. So I'm going to be quiet. Yeah. I uh. <laughs> It, it, it comes think. down to personal taste. I think, um, I don't know. I think a survival horror RPG probably lends itself more to not being so grind heavy because I think that being survival horror RPG, I think, especially like the first game, uh, was feels a lot more kind of westernized. And ironically, after the second game, feels a bit definitely a bit more JRPG. Um, so you know. I personally think that what you're trying to breed doesn't really tend to grind too much just because survival horror like isn't inherently a grindy sort of game and you're trying to incorporate a lot of that in. Um it can definitely work and you know there's definitely an audience for it and a market for it. Um but I feel like probably you, sh you don't have to. You should not feel even remotely like you should have to do it. Um you know if you want to do it for extra stuff, cool, go for it, but uh, it should be forced upon the player. I'm on the yeah, fence like, about it this. Oh, and right. day though it should be like again fun and the type of grind it is though like like um black black shadow i about to say your name wrong again uh mm -hmm. is if it's um like 
required for you to actually beat the game, then that's a problem. You know, that's a no-no for me. But if I do it at my own religion and I you know and I enjoy it, you know, let it be a choice, not a mandatory type thing. I agree. Yeah. And to me, Parasite Eve didn't feel grindy at all. Like I didn't have that feel to it. Even in the first one, it just always felt like, oh, I was that level for the area. It just didn't feel yeah, like I had to do it, right? Yeah. At least that's just my opinion. Yeah, the only time you had to do it was for the Chrysler Tower. That was yeah. it. And that was post game content and a crazy hard optional dungeon, in which that's just the name of the game. But yeah, for the main game experience, like you were pretty much always there um, to kind of like. I think tried to throw at you a bit more, obviously with repopulating the map, and it would like you go on that bit and say, right, you can go here, 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 and these have all got enemies again. Have fun. Um, you know, and it was like the game kind of wants you to do it. And I was worried that at times it felt like it was kind of trying to pad the game a little bit, which at times I think was trying to hide a bit of shallow gameplay otherwise. I mean, that's just me. Uh, but it felt like it was trying to fill some holes there. Uh, yeah, I, I, oh, go ahead, go ahead Rick. Okay, uh, I was gonna say like real quick. I'm sorry to cut you off, but um, I am fifty fifty about grinding per se in a horror game because I feel like it should definitely be fun no matter what you're doing. I, I feel like if it's not fun, then the problem is going to stem from the fact that you are grinding on a boss for like sixty or seventy hours and you're trying to simply just over level them. I know that's a question later in the document. But I also feel like if it's optional, like a complete side thing, I've seen people hop on the bandwagon and complain about what is the difference between an arduous chore and something actually fulfilling in an RPG in general. They don't like the missions in um, Final Fantasy Remake, uh, but it's all optional stuff that you can do to get like certain things, certain weapons, uh, certain battle scans, stuff like that. So I feel like if it's really just an optional choice and you don't have to do it way too often and it's not like main game breaking, then it's totally fine. Uh, it's just the, the problem seems to stem from the fact that if there is a boss where you have to constantly like get the level 100 to beat them, then it's sort of like a little bit tedious and repetitive at the same time. Yeah, I agree with everything that you've said there. I think it should be kind of a 50 50 thing. Uh, in the first game, I really felt like I had to do the Chrysler Tower because I kept finding cool stuff. So that just mm. kind of feeds something for me. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I definitely want to do this. But the limited time that I played too, it really felt like you did a lot of backtracking and that makes the game not fun. So that could yeah. be a developer issue too. Like maybe it's broken. Maybe they thought this was going to, you know, if we implement this, this was going to work well with the game and it doesn't turn out that way and players don't like it. So yeah. you should never feel like you have to do that. Is yeah, Chrysler it's, it's, building it's, it's, New Game Plus? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, you yeah. can't get you can't get an original game. It's totally New Game Plus. I literally just found out about it cuz I just like rebooted my uh, my uh, Parasite Eve like new game plus like oh shit there's a whole thing that i never knew was there so i'm kind of i'm pumped to yeah, play it yeah yeah it's it like um it is completely, completely crazy own. yeah it's its own it's its own game basically like you you go through the opening section you access to the map um you have the crisis view as an option and then you visit it and then you cry oh <laughs> well i yeah, mean I I, I think after seeing that hub area, that's why I questioned it, because I'm like, I don't see this area, and I heard, like, Black Shadow talk about it, and I'm like, yes. I, I think I have to just beat the game and get it, and from what I heard, it's just floor-based, you're going up, like, certain floors, fighting bosses and enemies and stuff like that, so, I mean, yeah. it, it could be entertaining, for sure, to upgrade yeah. your character it's, like that. It's a semi-randomized super dungeon, basically. Uh. Um that's the way it is with floors that are somewhat randomly generated and once they're generated they're fixed but the problem is is that they can be real bitches and again yeah there's some hideous hi i would argue some of the enemies you fight on the way up the tower are worse than what waits you at the top of the tower yeah especially towards like there's some like floors like 50 to 60 and such there's some oh my god some infuriating enemies you've got to deal with absolutely infuriating enemies so yeah Can't wait it it all depends on the gameplay meta. If 
if it's really just balanced out which is i guess ideal uh once they do that then it's just like i'm i'm not really having an issue with like grinding for a little bit just to uh get back to this fun boss fight or f fun enemy yeah it, it never felt like i don't think there's many points it felt like unfair but there are some cruel encounters which like will punish you if you're not ready for it you just walk into it you just get annihilated and you're like well this is a problem um and the problem is because of the way the tower works it's kind of hard to grind in the tower because once you i think it's like once you clear every 10th floor like the floor you've just been on then suddenly there are no enemies anymore i think so yeah, it means yes where you were yeah right. yeah so, fight anybody yeah so which means that if you need to like get more experience for like later fights you've got to just just fight it out in the upper floors and you've just got to survive basically which is tough hmm. but anyways uh how does anybody else feel about this question on grinding and horror games mm. i Give mean me you're fr i mean you're free to do what you want if you want to grind to have a better chance it's fine i mean it's a single player game yeah i can see that notion yeah there's plenty of examples of these sort of games where you don't need to grind you're like a dead space for example and there are experience i'm sure there's uh examples of games where are more grindy which have also worked pretty well i can't think of any on top of my head but i'm sure there's some here's the thing i, I guess i don't mind a grind like a grind doesn't really fit into a horror game for me but a, a game can have horror themes and still have that grind and i'd be okay with it like um i don't think i play parasite eve to get scared I play Parasite Eve because it has those those survival horror elements in a very nice, like, body horror cool theme. And it has the grind that I don't mind too much. So it's just like, I'm not going to play. A, I don't think a scary game can have a grind, but I think horror themes can have a grind to it and be fun. Uh, I'm tempted to say I saw Aya Brea promotion art and I was like, sign me up. But that might <laughs> be speed. Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> Awkward. All right, so I guess we can move on to number eight. So agree or disagree. Do you feel like limited progression for difficult encounters makes better sense to rely on skill and experience alone? An example is like cutting off the escape option for certain rooms in a horror RPG. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, though, anything should be skill dependent, though, but as so long as the fight fair and actually makes you like feel like you're in control or you no, know, you're allowed to actually you know experiment with the fight instead of just like, Okay, this boss fight sucks a lot of a freaking ball, so let me just do this cheap way and move on. That kind of deal. Yeah, I, I feel like the way they should do it. Okay, one thing I really liked about, uh, I know this is like a different topic, but like hack and slash games where they have you fight a certain boss as an intro boss and he comes back, he's reoccurring that's one thing that i think is really good for horror rpgs to get you like sort of accustomed to the mechanics and then they flip it on his head and it's like oh this boss now he has all these new moves how do i counter this how do i counter that uh so i think basically learning the pattern as you go is probably the best way to do it like it's limited at first and then as you get stronger and get better things get harder so it's not like um it's a full-on squash when you go into a match and you fight the boss you fought like six times already and there's a perfect example of this in a morse for horror setting nemesis yeah there's an evil yeah. it's exactly the same isn't it it's exactly yeah. Yeah. the same concept and we all know that works you know that, that did pretty good for itself yeah, like you're yeah, rewarded right. too for fighting him. So yeah. you know, and then and once you're... you start, once you get to a point where you're kind of getting on top of him, the game then changes him up to try and make him more harder to predict. Then all, and then still ties it into the story of that you're beating the shit out of him. He's like kind of transforming as he goes. You know, yeah, he has weapons, he has items, he uses them. It is once there is an adoptable nature of like learning how the boss works and how he learns against you. I think that's the best way to go. Or um, <clears throat> expanding on that, taking a boss enemy that you fight, you know, first or second chapter in a game or something or whatever, uh, and then becomes a reoccurring, just regular enemy. Um, oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. So like, um, uh, like Resident Evil 4 does that all the time. If you want to, like, just citing a popular example, or, or there's a lot of Devil May Cry, or not Devil May Cry, but there's a lot of action games that do that too. 
Mm -hmm. well, I mean, Demon Cry is a good example. Um, yeah, Demon yeah, Cry, that, that um, does it. Re, um, yeah. the Reaper that you meet um, in Mission Two, he becomes yeah. a, a common enemy. Well, Eric was common enemy throughout the mm -hmm. game later on. So, like, that is a good example. Yeah, yeah, you just amp it basically. Hmm. Um, but yeah, if you limited progression, difficult encounters. Oh yeah, man. If I'm doing poorly, if I don't do something right, punish the hell out of me. I'm, mm. If I'm oh, done, yeah. like it ties back into the grinding thing. Like I'm gonna grind the hell out of a game so I don't reach that point. Huh. Like I'm gonna scour and do all that stuff. So like when I get to that point, I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm fine. Yeah, no hand holding, please. Like I, I think that's just some people. It makes them feel like it's an insult, and I, I don't think that's great to be honest. I don't think I could ever accuse the Parasite Eve series of any hand holding. No, definitely oh, no. not. No, definitely no, not. No, 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 no. Yeah. All right. I guess we can move on to question number nine. So, who wants to read that? I'll go. Agree or disagree? Should survival horror RPGs be more action based, or should it be more supply scarce to invoke the feel of tension? Mm. I think there's actually quite a current question you could ask that's very similar, which um, you know. It's sort of similar. Uh, for those who've done it, did you prefer Resident Evil 7 or did you prefer Resident Evil 8? Because it's exactly the same. 8 Seven. was a very more action pace compared to 7, which was much more tension and just about pure survival. It's quite a similar, uh, I think it's quite a similar idea. You know, again, it, I personally prefer 7 because I kind of like that more. Other people want something a bit more kind of action y and aggression y. It's totally fine. Um, it it's comes down, I think, quite a lot to personal taste. I'm going to be the outlier and say both. Because um, a good example of it doing oh, okay. both is Resident Evil 3. You no, know, it has tension mm -hmm. while also being fast-paced or action-based. You know? Mm -hmm. So I, I think uh, you, you could do both, though. Plus, plus size, though, if you're going to talk about... We just got done talking about <sighs> grinding, right? I think that if you're going to include grinding or whatever, right, it should have more supplies for you to pick up on the way um, after, like, say, defeating enemy supply points, whatever um, the context may be. Yeah, I'm going to go with both because I like the idea of like less items and shit and more like you're you're running around, you're on your last leg and you have to basically pick up everything you need for the next encounter, but I'm also like I enjoy upgrading my character a lot and making myself feel strong in the process. Uh so I it's really difficult to say I like one over the other when I really do like both. I think, that, I think there's a lot of, you have to kind of, it has to be in context of the game, you know, uh, I think Parasite Eve 1, which is a game where Aya is like in the middle of this carnage going on and has no real idea of what's happening or why, probably lends itself more to something that's a bit more scarce, you know, to make you think that you could die at any point. In the second game, you know, like she's been through this once, she's been with the FBI and that sort of thing is much more understanding what's going on, not only with the situation, but herself probably makes more sense for it to be a bit more action-y because like it makes more sense in plot i think especially nowadays as well you know as i make this argument all the time you've got all these you know great mechanics and graphic engines and you want to make everything look so amazingly crazy i don't think it's ever going to want to try and slow that down i don't think that's generally worked all that often um especially nowadays um, there's always going to be uh, a market for this, you know, go through Steam. There is a ton of indie games of, you know, trying to go back to the the, the basic formula of what they were, hey, RPGs were like, you know, some horror games like 20 years ago. And there were people who enjoy those. But I think nowadays, like, I mean, you're talking general market, like it, it's generally, it's about speed. Um, like we talked about with, with the Final Fantasy VII Remake um, sort of style, you know, and just dropping into battles and cracking on with it. Oh, God, you just reminded me that of the stupid acronym in Parasite Eve 2 for the group MIST. Oh! Uh, I don't know why I was just thinking of that, but, like, it was that time where everyone had dumb acronyms for all their names. Everything had to have an stars. acronym. Everything. Like, like, stars, Dino Crisis 2 had TRAT. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it, there's Crash, and there's all this dumb stuff. Sorry, completely off topic, but it's yeah. just, like, you just reminded me that, it, like, it was that point in time. Yeah. It, oh, was yeah. 90s. it was yeah, the 90s. It was, it was, it was the 90s. in thing. Everything had it, you know? Oh, God. Yeah, it's still a thing today, so, yeah. Crash, a little bit later on as well, GTA. Yeah, yeah. Uh, God. It, it regards this question, I guess, like, I think, I mean, the, the easy answer is definitely both, but I guess in my opinion, like, you, the action shouldn't outshine the rest of the game. I think that's where I'm, like, always taking a step back, because, like, in RE7, the, the example for that uh, for me is that there is this action component to it 
but it doesn't feel like that's the most important part because there's there's that tension there's that feel there's the scares but like i don't want my game to feel like an action game i i want my game to feel like a horror tense scary game that i have to use action elements to help hopefully survive right mm. At least yeah. that's, that, that's where I sit in it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's my, that's my argument with Seven. That's why I liked it so much. Eight, yeah. I think... Eight, I've got no problem with it being action-y. I think it was a bit gratuitous at times, and there was, like... Th there's definitely times you could have toned that back, and you didn't need to be that much. And I think a game... Like, if, if you were going to do a Parasite E, for example, nowadays, like, you definitely have these sort of situations or these more chaotic scenes, but you shouldn't just have action and fighting for the sake of action and fighting. You've got to have it's got to have context and meaning and not just there just to feel time or to look good. Yeah, this is honestly, though, go like real quick, just the comment on that seven versus eight thing. The reason why I will always pick eight over seven, because, yeah, is eight is a lot faster, though, but not because of just is action versus no, it's the whatever thing you want to call seven, right? Because of how the game is just built. Like, 7 is just a slog in comparison to, like, the sequels because of how um, Capcom just outright designed the game mechanically. You know, Ethan is slow as fuck in that game compared to what he is in 8. Yeah. He's a lot faster yeah. on his feet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, like, I, yeah, we'll get back to this, but yeah, I, yeah personally, I, I prefer the Fuel 7, but I, will, I happily accept that 8, like, mechanically is a better made game. And, like, objectively, it's probably a better game. Um, I'm I'm happy to accept that. It's just it's just my personal preference. So. To be yeah. honest, I kind of preferred the setting of eight more. Honestly, I kind of like the setting of seven more. Like that that podcast is going to be interesting when we get to it because oh yeah, oh, I, <laughs> I I I do like village, but I like the tension of the the darkness and the and the plantation a little bit more. So I don't know, but I, I will say back on topic. Uh, a section like this happened where there was like a lot of action going on at RE3 with the zombies in the hospital. There was context, but I, I thought it was flat out ridiculous, even in context, because you had the zombies exploding into little tiny chunks. You had to do a survival sort of like um, section where you had to kill everyone so they won't get to Jill. And it is... I mean, it's fine for what it is, but it's definitely oh, not. Yeah, yes. the remake. It's uh, definitely. Yeah, I was, I was, I was thinking. I was thinking of... talking about. <laughs> yeah, I was <laughs> talking about the original. No, no, no. Oh, it, yeah. it was a remake. Uh, but it's definitely one of those scenes where it's like it's not tension based at all in terms of horror. You're just completely mowing things down with Carlos's like gun, and that's about it. Uh, so I, I just like more panic, more dread. Even Village has a scene of like suspense in it, which I'm going to talk about on that podcast and not here, but it, it's still something great and something to behold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what? Uh, okay, I could talk about that that little conundrum right there all day because I just I just thought of something though, but it's not relevant to this topic today. Yeah, I'll, I'll hold it for that. We'll, 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 we'll get there. We'll definitely. I 100 want to sign up for that Resident Evil podcast at this point gonna be a busy one it might be a it might be doing it all day at this rate oh huh? man that's gonna be a talk <laughs> yeah uh but anyone else before we move on to the next one nah okay. uh this one's pretty oh. easy so uh agree or disagree does the formula of turn-based mechanics still hold up for you with survival horror rpgs yes or no explain why uh, uh, I'll, i mean oh. okay, sorry real quick though what other um turn-based um horror stuff out there because well, to be technical though um few, parasite, well on parasite eve is technically not turn based it's um free action ATB. So. yeah yeah uh, i don't know there's there's Koldika and the shadow hearts games well the first oh two are god, more god, horror. i've never played those so i can't say shadow hearts yeah. oh my god yeah. that game's so good um yeah there's also a lot of rpg maker games that are like turn based yeah. kind mm -hmm. of stuff too but that's your that's some... a dark pool that you're diving into that is crazy water for some reason yes. the horror rpgs are kind of scarce very hit or miss to be honest yeah. yes the infinite hour syndicate would like to advise caution when jumping into rpg maker be careful be careful what you're signing up to before you start delving into some of the shit on that mm -hmm. <laughs> please be careful act responsibly you ever see that sign that's underwater for cave diving and they're like people have died in here please don't go in it's like that's what it's like getting in <laughs> rpg maker horror games oh man yeah, no, it's nuts. Um, I, I'd say that turn-based increases tension anyway. I mean, I've had plenty of tense moments playing turn-based games, even recently with Yakuza 7. 
uh, lots of tense moments where it comes down to the wire, but it's a completely different kind of tension than mm. what a horror yeah. provides. Um, I would say if it's executed well on top of horror, you can make a really tense situation absolutely dreadful. But I mean, that's that's got to take some special kind of person to pull that off. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah it's, it's 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 the exception, not the rule, isn't it? I yeah. think that's the uh, I think that's the the basic where we're at here. Like it can be made to work. But the the case of them working, I think, are a lot less than when it hasn't. And again, especially nowadays, um, you know, where things are a lot more, you know, fast paced and everything. Like it does feel particularly old fashioned now, um, which is just the way it is. Not everyone's happy about that, and you know, the, but that's where we're at, unfortunately. And my go-to example is Parasite Eve. I don't. I struggle to like go anywhere else with that example. So it's just... <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, that's the exception, not the rule. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to disagree with the question and not you, Divic. Like, this is... <laughs> I just want to be clear on that. Uh, but no, it's... Yeah, it's just... It's it's old. We need It needs to be refreshed. Like, you can't... This is why you don't see that many horror RPGs out there, because it's it's hard to mesh uh, the mechanics from, from both of the, the different types of games. It was you know, hard to want... mesh 20 years ago. Yeah, 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 and this was, I would say, P one was just like a happy accident because of everything they had that came together. Bob yeah, Ross, though. See, yeah, oh, yeah, man, just put a little, little, little cloud here with skulls. Yeah, it was yeah, in the right place exactly at the right it time. Had the right audience. Mm -hmm. Had the right ingredients. Um, right people working on it. Yeah, the right people working yeah. on it, and it worked, and it was yeah. great. And they tried the same thing again in the sequel, and it just didn't work as well because they also tried to do they just kind of jumped on the bandwagon with certain things and it didn't it didn't match as well as the first one did so yes. yeah i'm gonna i just i think it's time for something new if they're gonna try to do more of these like if that's gonna be a thing then they need to kind of reinvent the wheel and figure out what works and what doesn't eve 2 was also like it was a different team and everything from what, from my understanding yeah. so it's just like i mean it didn't even start off as a main entry no yeah when are we getting our uh, Parasite Eve idler game? When's that coming out? Idol Master. Yeah, Idol Master Parasite Eve. Oh, good I'm, no. God. Bro, the I'm ultimate trailer. Uh, you know, uh, real quick, let me get my um, actual opinion now. Now, now I hear your guys' side. Like, I'm actually in. Uh, what, who said it? Um, Black Devil. Yeah. Um, that last thing. Yeah, you know what? I'm at, I'm partially agreeing with you on that one. Like, I think we should just move away from the um, like the turn base or whatever type thing. And just go on something that it would be more uh, acceptable for the type of genre, right? To give it to its fullest potential. Right. Yeah. I mean, I feel the same way about just horror movies in general. There's just there's a certain thing, and I'm not trying to get off topic here, but it, so many horror movies take place at night, and there are so many terrifying things that happen during the daytime, and you can count on your hand almost like literally like how many of those movies take place during the day. That's the kind of thinking that they need for this genre. What is it that is going to bring those scary, those those terrifying elements in, and how do we bring in an RPG audience into this? Uh, um, environment would be one thing because, um, like with horror movies, it's always either like in warm weather, like summer or spring, right? Mm -hmm. But nothing in like the fall or winter. Like a good example would be Fire Thirteen. The um, movie before it was canceled was going to be in winter time instead of summer. You know, to change yeah. it up. So like yeah, I think it definitely on um, something like that it needs to be um taken into consideration. Mm. Anybody else? I mean, I'd have I mean I'd have to say that turn based games are still I mean there's still an audience for them and I want to see more of them. Uh, no, I know we ain't talking about turn based games by themselves. We're talking about drama. No, I mean that's what I mean. Horror. Oh, turn based horror games. Hmm. I mean, Shadow Hearts was doing it for a while, and it worked. But then again, it did its own unique thing by having the the whole wheel thing, where you would, where you could get like extra attacks in if you got them in the right place. I thought that Especially, was cool. What was the last Shadow Heart game that came out from the New World on PlayStation Two? But that wasn't really a horror game. And how many years ago was it? Shit, like 2005, 2006. Oh, yes. I was say, you're looking at about 15 years. Oh, geez. Exactly. You're looking at about 15 years. So. Yeah, you yeah, got it. Back. 
reinvent the wheel. I mean, yeah, genres change all the time. I mean, you know, you're talking about turn-based. There was a, a major series just went from a brawler to turn-based, and it's the most popular entry in the series. So there's, there's always room for evolution changing the genre, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, was, that right there in itself was also a happy accident because given what it was um, goes on in Japan, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That and also, like, you know, the popularity of the drama in Japan alone, like, you know, that yeah. helped a lot, so. No, absolutely. I mean, it, it, any any genre, when it stays for long enough or something doesn't sit for, or go anywhere for long enough, it stagnates and it creates, you know, somebody wants to make a counterpoint to it, right? It's how you get stuff like NGE or, you know, Gurren Lagann or whatever. I mean, uh, somebody sees something and says, hey, this is, I'm sick of this. I want to change this. And, like, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, you know, RPG horror gets that. Yeah. All right, fellas, you guys done with this one? Yeah. Okay, I guess we can move on to number 11. So, how do you feel about the idea of being overleveled in horror RPGs? Fuck it, bring it on, man. I earned it. Okay, so <laughs> if if I am, let's say, doing well and I'm on like New Game Plus and I have all my mana abilities, all that stuff. I should be inclined to destroy every single monster I see. I, I've earned it. I've definitely grinded for it. I don't see the big issue on that one. Yeah, and to, good for you. For a little time, you get to do that. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Not for long, but a little exactly. bit. You get to think, oh, it. I've got this in the bag now. And then the game's like, oh. Uh. I have a feeling that that Chrysler building is going to fuck me over, isn't it? You will never forget yeah. it. You yep. shadow of it constantly. I, I stopped after i got that uh psg one i was i tried it a few times after that and i said forget it i have never completed the tower i got the weapon that i wanted and i left it at that I, it was to the point where i was going to check my controller and not not a good day yeah. i said like, i i i just stopped the handguns personally i took out to this but yeah but like i like just that's why it's versatility because it the, the tower throws all sorts of shit at you and like you've got to have like different ideas you know some enemies need like specific types of approaches so which you know but okay I feel like we still do it like we do it in games now anyway. Like if you like dominate a Resident Evil game now, your reward is just like, oh, hey, here's a rocket launcher that just makes the game like just infinitely easy. Right. And it's just like you've earned it. Right. It's it's that oh, it's that sense of over leveling or accomplishing it like, ah, hey, I deserve to fuck these guys up. Mm. Exactly. You know, I, I have a better way to reword this question. How do you feel about being over level, but they decide to change around the enemy levels like making them even stronger or something equivalent to like uh dark souls or bloodborne where you go back and then things get like twice as hard well it depends on how the context of uh, how the game's set right because i'm um, like like you just mentioned with like say dark souls and bloodborne if you let's say you do a new game plus the enemies will get stronger so like, essentially while you're like say god in like base game right go to new game plus one you're a bit again so like no, I I like systems like that where like okay cool like if they um if they scale the game up with me and I could um, gr- re grind myself up to be on top again I'm fine with that because at least I'm not bored after a while because no yeah no being strong is cool enough but after a while you eventually will get bored of just one shot and everything right you want a little bit of a challenge yeah so yeah, like that's... certain games like outside of the genre like um like Final Fantasy twelve there are options where you could do new game plus or new game minus where your level or an items could carry over and plus or and minus so you lose certain things though and yeah start over while still keeping the other sets of um settings or items or love character levels for example so uh-huh. like i wish games did, did more that often but good i was gonna say not to because you guys are gonna have a village discussion that'll last two days at this rate but yeah um uh, village village of shadows difficulty does it fairly well in my opinion it by the time you Ooh. complete village you can get some on un- maybe one or two unlimited ammo guns or on rock grenade launcher whatever uh but then the game goes uh hey you see that unlimited grenade launcher uh, have fun with that and tosses like mid-game enemies at you in the first area yeah so literally like, at the beginning like, so I mean, like I've, that, that's great yeah i mean i've literally just gone through with this show i finished it today on vanilla not yeah. using any new game stuff plus um, how did that go for you 
Um, like the beginning's kind of brutal, as I mm. knew it was gonna be. I mean, I played unbelievably well towards like the back half of the game, uh, which helped a lot. Um, I have my own issue with this sort of game. Like, uh, this is getting getting off topic here, but like you know, when Resident Evil Three with its Inferno mode, which I think was horrendously implemented, I think it was a, one of the worst game modes I've ever seen in a Resident Evil game. Um, you know, it's a shame because Nightmare's fantastic. Um, Village Showers, I think it's it's. I, I I don't know. I, I, I'm I all for, for these sort of modes where, like, you go through it again and it will change up things. It will throw stuff at you, which you're not expecting normally. I'm totally cool with that. Um, but it's a very fine line between me- refreshing things and making it more difficult and then forcing you to basically use content that you'd only get post-game in order to actually take them on the first place. I think it's a very fine line. Yeah, for um, sure. You know, Village, I think, did an okay job of it, um, which is a change again from Remake, from, from Remake 3, which I think Nightmare did a fantastic job, and Inferno, I think, was horrendous. Um, I mean, I beat that vanilla as well, but that was just to prove a damn point. So, um, I mean, yeah, because it's possible and plausible doesn't mean it's fun or good. No, no, exactly. And the way it implemented mm-hmm. in 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 it's fine. So yeah, like yeah, you know, if that's yeah, that's mm-hmm. basically. Me. I, I guess in that sense, like the progression system in Village was, uh, it. <laughs> sorry, we're going into Village, but um, mm-hmm. but the example I want to use is like when I was playing the first time and I started upgrading my weapons and stuff like that. It I. I didn't feel that power boost ever. I always felt like my upgrades just didn't matter, which I don't know, like, which just kind of goes against the over leveling thing, which I, which I think a system could work with it. It's just like my, my upgrades just didn't feel like they mattered. It took more hits to kill enemies as I upgrade. I mean, maybe that's my experience, but yeah, village just, I, I, damn it. I hate we still on this though, but essentially in, um, in that context though, like, yeah, like, um, if you go up a difficulty though, Things could go a little too far on um, how the enemies um, design. Like things will get too tanky, or have too yeah. much health, or you yeah, do a little the, too damage. Yeah, like the, the, <laughs> the replays in Parasite Eve Two get insane. Like the the stat checks you have to do and the things you have to do in the higher difficulty levels in order to get good ranks are like actually crazy people things. Mm. So yeah, like they there are there are definitely ways to not hit that. That being said being a person that loves to grind if i went and i grinded three hours and i i killed all the stuff multiple times and did whatever and i'm just crushing stuff cool man i'm down i'm, I'm down mm. with it you've earned that shit yeah i yeah. love that feeling I, that's the reason i did it yeah you were invested <laughs> yeah exactly i'm invested now i'm just shooting fireballs out of every pore of my body <laughs> 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 all right i guess we can move on to the last one so brandon you want to take that because we got to like steam through real quick so we can do oh, guests uh, oh, side off this your is favorite, interesting yeah side off your favorite rpg horror rpg that isn't particularly parasite eve what makes them so unique and enjoyable in your opinion uh examples of uh, angry national damn okay uh, that's a good <laughs> Example, there's a um, few that have come up already over the yeah, course of this yeah. uh of this so i'd like to say you know I, village I um, again that's yeah, yeah village yeah. death space I mean, that's more of a survival yeah. or that's kind of stretching it well i mean it's just basically it's not a lot of them so we have to definitely pick on like what type of horror game we have where we upgrade our character and if it's our favorite yeah um i would i would say vampire the masquerade immediately that's one of those games where that's a ton of RPG stuff, a lot of decisions that matter, a lot of like crazy ways to play through it. Mm-hmm. Or hey, um, golf, freaking System Shock. Even though I'm not. Yeah, so I, I was going to say the system, 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 system shock. Shocks as well. Yeah, I, yeah. I like, you know, it's going old school and there's like, you know, a bit of a progenitor for like the kind of the breed of the series as well. Really, yeah. really good stuff. System Shock is a good call. I, did, I didn't even think of that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, God, System Shock. My so go to um, is. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say that, like, with Vampire the Masquerade, like, that straight up horror game, um, super in depth universe, super in depth everything. Uh, and your character, just depending on how you roll stuff, is really different every time. And there's two, uh, I don't know how familiar you guys are with the game, but there's two different races that you can play that change the entire experience of the game. Uh, once you go through it once, you know, it's recommended to do it just with a normal kind of vampire, but then you do it with, like, um, I can't remember what they're called. It's been years, but uh, one of them is crazy, and it'll literally, literally like have voices in your head and alter the entire experience of the game, like that kind of stuff. Um, and then Stalker comes to mind too, which isn't too much of an RPG, but mm-hmm. Stalker very 
unique, very weird, very strange uh, RPG style shooter, like that kind of stuff. Mm. My go to is uh, is Dead Island, like in this in this mm. realm. There's just so much that I love about that, and it literally like feeds everything that I love about playing video games. You got a long main story, multiple multiple side quests. You know your leveling system for your characters, weapon construction and mods, open world mechanics. On top of that, it's just like it is a perfect storm. I have literally spent hundreds of hours just going back through and trying to find Easter eggs and. What if I do this with this skill tree with this character? It's just really fun to to work with that. I'm gonna say Fatal Frame. I, out of like all these, like I really enjoy these games, but it's something about upgrading that damn camera and being like so satisfied by that shit. I, I just really enjoy either stunning the ghost or like uh doing things where I'm like slowing them down or I, I just really enjoy all of that stuff being like injected into my veins. Um, I guess if I had a second one, it would probably be like Galarian's. I played that recently and I really enjoy the idea of your AP gauge filling up. And once it does, you go into overdrive. And if you walk into someone, their brains will explode. And I'm like, it's the coolest thing I ever seen ever. Uh, for, for me, and this is totally going to be the most biased answer I have here. Um, and it's the one when I was checking the list, it jumped out at me, but uh, Bloodborne. Uh, probably one that I could always throw on, and it's also how oh, I met my that's partner. That's a good example. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. It's also yeah. how I met my partner, so it's just like, yeah, I'm going to be biased towards it because it's a fucking great game, and I can play it whenever, and you know what? Get two other friends and just co-op that shit. It's a great yeah. game. We need that 60 FPS patch, like, ASAP. Like, oh my god, Maybe dude. when the PC port comes, but I don't know. Wait, did they know. unlock the FPS for uh, the PS5 version? I don't no. know. No, not having it. There is a 60 FPS patch, but it's only if you have like a hacked PS4. It, it could do on PS5 as well, though. But again, that's like going out of, out of realm of possibilities. But and that's a different discussion altogether. Yeah. Right, we got anything else to add to this one? I'm trying to think of more horror RPGs off the top of my head. I mean, the other one that jumped out at me was Dead Space, which is probably a perfect game. Got... But that's just yeah, Dead Space. You mentioned yeah, exactly. Dude, Dead Space is so cool, especially with the gun modifications in three mm -hmm. and shit. Yeah. Oh, I love it so much. Yeah, like, I, um... yeah Ryzen would be a good example. Of this, though. I mean, it is technically a survival type game, right? You no know, horror, debatably, depending on how you look at it. But yeah, like you know, it's straight up an RPG, all things considered. You can beat oh, yeah. a zombie pay. to death with a dildo. So there you go. Right. I'm probably going to play Dead Space after this podcast, so... <laughs> nice. I would argue... I, I, just one more, and, you know, kind of correct me if I'm wrong. If, if anyone here has played Pathologic... Um, oh, I have patho not. Pathologic. I Pathologic is the strangest experience because I can't genre it because it's so many things at once and it's so much not at once. It's just an experience. It's just It's a stress simulator. But, man, that is one of those things that just, like, from a horror perspective, at least, it sticks in your brain and it kind of stays there for a really long time um it's weird it's tense it's it, it does all of that kind of rpg stuff it's very slow uh correctly um and then it kind of just like sits in the back of your head when you finish it and then you finish it a second time and then it ruins your brain logic is like I guess, I guess to me, pathologic feels it special is the term because it's just like it's so unique in what it does and it's just nothing like it yeah yeah and your brain's on fire by the time you finish it three times. Like, you're just like, what is going? Like, it's a fever dream. Yeah, I definitely, definitely haven't gone that far into it. I, I, like, I haven't beaten it, but, like, you can tell already. I'm a few days in, and it's just like, yeah, yeah, this feels special. There's something, there's something here. Yeah. All right, fellas, we got to eventually do... Wait. Go ahead. Oh, I didn't get to say my part. Yeah, go ahead, oh, Drew. Yeah. Uh, uh, lost. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> but I was gonna. I was surprised no one mentioned like Shadow Hearts. That's like the. I think that's like the best yeah. horror RPG that I a lot of never played them. I think I heard it in passing, but yeah. Other than the name itself, no. I heard it, but yeah, Kadoka. it takes place like in the early 1900s, and it's really good. You I... play. You can. T I think you play as someone who can like morph into like other monsters. Yeah, I've heard oh. of Kadoka, but I have not heard That's of Shadow Hearts. That's kind of a prequel. That's a prequel to Shadow Hearts. Oh, okay. Okay. But yeah. 
made me think of was uh, Kagero uh, Deception 2. I don't know why that popped into my head, but that that's a weird turn-based trap horror game. I don't know. I mean, I can't even describe it. That's That has so much weird stuff that works. But yeah, the the whole thing is that whenever you fight, you're supposed to like hit. You're supposed there's like a clock thing where you're supposed to make sure you hit hit in like the green area so you can be able to get extra hits. It's pretty interesting. Oh, and it's also how you get combos. And then the second game, they have like more historical figures in it. I think one of the bosses is actually Rasputin, and he's like and he's like a mage. Also, uh, Drill, are you done? Because um, we, we have to move on quickly. Yeah, yeah we have to move that's on to cool. outros. Yeah, that's a... it. It's cool. Uh, just we have to get the guests now. So we're going to do outros here. Uh, for people who want to stay, they can stay as we talk to the guests for like 10 minutes each. We only have like two of them, so it's not going to be that long. Uh, so we're going to outro ourselves. Anyone who is leaving after outros, they are free to bell. Anyone who wants to stay, we are going to move to the guest hangout. Uh, so I'm going to outro myself first. My name is Renegade Operative. You can find me on YouTube at Renegade Operative or Twitch at Ren underscore Operative. Um, I will be playing a whole host of games. I, I don't know where I'm going to start. Maybe um, I'll play The Suffering because I just got that game working on my PC and it should be interesting. Ren likes suffering, apparently. Oh, and I should correct myself. That is Renegade underscore operative for Twitch. I was thinking of Twitter for some reason, but I didn't plug it. So, but you know where to find me. I'm not. I'm not a hard man to find. Debatably, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. Well, I mean, you could find. You could probably find him on this. You know, walking in your backyard or something. What the hell? I'm not. No, that, uh, I'm not Michael Myers. That I have to worry about joining this Discord. Is that the fear that I have to have now? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Devic, outro yourself, good sir. Hey, I uh, just sit on the Discord and play Doom and uh, talk about Dino Crisis and all that dumb stuff. I don't really have social, so you know. Best oh, Doom but, game, uh, go. But Doom is the best Doom game. That's it. That's it. Hey, Amen. Drill. Oh yeah, you can find me on Twitter at drillvid seven seven seven. That's where I'm mostly at. Black Devil. Um, I'm I just hang out here and I post dumb memes that pop in occasionally. Oh, that's fine. That's totally fine. That's absolutely fine. Uh, Black Shadow, outro yourself, yeah. good sir. Have yeah. Another one. Yeah, no, right. yeah. You can find me on on uh, YouTube under Black Shadow Nine Three, where I make such terrible decisions such as offering to do Village of Shadow Runs on Village with conditions and throwing it to straw polls to get screwed over by my audience. I also do stuff as well on uh, Twitch at Black underscore Shadow underscore Nine Nine Three. Uh, now do Village of Shadows with knife only. That oh. is probably coming this September. Because oh man, I'll oh. watch that. I'm doing a, I'm doing a, I'm streaming actually on Twitch. Uh, cheap plug alert here. Uh, but I yeah. am doing a, I'm looking to do a base handgun run of RE5. I did one for RE4, which was brutal. And we're oh, doing that's one pretty for... easy with RE5, to be quite honest, because the, the base handgun is probably the best one to use max upgraded. Well, no upgrades. Nothing. Uh, no uh, upgrades? Yeah, it's something no that upgrades. Yeah, I mean, I I've seen crazier runs. Like someone tried to do it, with, tried to play RE5 with only the rotten egg. Oh, no. The baton only. Let's go. Well, le let's get to grow lock. Yep. Uh, yeah, you can find me on YouTube. There's nothing there, but you know, YouTube slash grow lock. Um, <laughs> nothing there yet. I mean, working on some shit, but you know, otherwise I just hang out, play games and chat in the discord like uh, everyone else. Ethan. Must I? Yeah, Ethan must I? <laughs> yeah. You can find hey, him ah. in a grave site in, e in Eastern Europe. I have so much to talk about with that game. <laughs> Sorry. I just, I, I just tuned back in and you find him in a gravesite. I was like, what? Uh, I, I tried to hold in my laughter so hard. I just could not. Uh, okay. Uh, you can find me in, in a, either a madhouse or a village in um, Romania being chased by a tall vampire lady in a hobo Dante. I'm just kidding. But um, you can find me on Twitter at Immortal Brendel. 
Uh, I have a YouTube though, but it's not finished yet, so don't ask for it. And everybody else is now you got done business. Have a good day, night, and whatever else in the world for you. All right, so we are about to jump into the guest hangout, and we're gonna hang out there. And after twenty minutes, we should be done. Twenty minutes, air quotes. Yes, twenty minutes, air quotes. All right, I'm jumping in right now. Oh, can, can I can I be heard? Uh, uh, parasite. Let's see. Hold on. Uh, oh shit! You can put this public. Wow. There we go. Right. Apparently, I see there's features where you could put this like public to the entire world, and I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't want to do that. You should do it, Ren. Uh, put it to the whole world. I don't. I don't want all these people here coming in here talking about like memes and dicks. Do it. This is, this it. is why you limit who can talk and who can't. Let me. Uh, this is, this is a pretty interesting feature. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty. It's pretty neat. You'll play around of it. So oh, nice. You could just jump in and like then jump right back out. I like it. Oh, yeah, the special what, people. If, what if someone just jumps in and just says like a meme and then just go and then just leaves? Oh, yeah, that'd be no, the most... only, only people with certain permissions are allowed to do it. So, um, yeah, that'd be the most terrible thing in the world. So I'm going to invite uh, AK Austin so he can speak and give us 10 minutes on Parasite Eve or survival horror RPGs. All right. There you go. You are on air, sir. All right, cool. Well, honestly, I just wanted to say that survival RPGs is legit my favorite two subgenres. Mix it to one. I grew up with Resident Evil Three original, and I grew up with lots of RPG games like uh, Final Fantasy and many others alike. I think just it blends well, you know. I think it has a really good combination, especially of progression. It also inflicts that skill in you, kind of like Dead Space does. And I always just wondered, um, especially you, Ren, uh, what would be your favorite type of RPG survival horror game other than Parasite Eve you just recently played? Um, I, I think I talked about it recently. It's it's kind of a wacky game, but I, I said I liked um, Dead Rising. I also mentioned that I like something else that was on the list. I think that was um, Galarian's. Uh, that was pretty cool. It's a game that not a lot of people know about that has like psychological horror elements and you can like mm -hmm. have telekinesis, pyrokinesis. It's, it's really something interesting and worth checking yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually watched a couple of videos on it because I was like looking into a bunch of survival horror stuff a couple of years back, you know? Yeah. I was like, oh, this is a really neat game for what it was, you know? Cool concept. I'll give it that. Uh, do you have any like sort of opinions on Parasite Eve that you want to talk to us about? Uh, actually, I do. Um, because I've only. From Shadow's perspective, I've only seen Parasite Eve in 1 and 2 at this point, not the third yeah, birthday. Yeah, yeah. I, I will state officially, it's, it's a little funky, this, because Austin's a big part of my, my channel, so uh, I, I, yeah. I have not paid him for any cheat plugs he may or may not get. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like, honestly, overall, I enjoyed, I think, the second one more than the first one, in my personal opinion, opposite to uh, Shadow. It's just for the simple fact that I think the first one, pacing-wise, is a lot weirder than the second one. I think the second one sets out what it wants to be more than the first one. I think the first one is like, oh, we have this idea, and we're just going to roll with it. And they kind of did that as well as they could have at the time. I think with Parasite Eve 2, they were able to refine the pacing to like fit the narrative they wanted to tell, especially since they had, they had to focus more of a plot device than trying to tell an entire story about the mitochondria and crap like that so that would be like yeah. my... yeah, sorry um real quick interject i'm actually gonna disagree with you on that one on on one premise like the pacing in two comes to a screeching halt when it comes to certain gameplay elements like the puzzles or the bat dragon especially when like one segment where you need to go pick up a wrench or whatever and you got s's do then you gotta run all the way back there and or, or run the opposite direction i forgot how the, um, the pattern goes, but uh, that's a uh, problem with that game is pacing. Like, it's not consistent when it comes to its um, elements. Yeah. I think that was my argument I made, is it, it's very stop-start. 
like when it works it's great but it is a bit all over the place and the problem is there's a lot of uh opportunities for the player to kind of miss something or not realize something's happening or get caught up in something else but it just kind of enforces like you've got to backtrack or you've got to go and find a a solution to this crazy puzzle which you're like what even the heck is this um and I, it doesn't it's not particularly cohesive i think that was my issue with with uh with parasite Eve 2 it was a, it was just a bit all over the place yeah i, I totally understand that it's just like uh I said it's my my personal opinion is completely opposite to yours in the terms of like the pacing with one and two, but like 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 I think the f- main thing I have the biggest concern was was the uh, the tower uh, with New Game Plus and Parasite Eve one of how like how gigantic and long and kind of like strenuous at times it was, but it was like supposed to prepare you for for anyone knows know the secret that happens in there. Yeah, I, th- then, I think everyone talked about how, uh, especially when it came to my playthrough, how everyone gets fisted in the tower. Uh, there's, there's no it's other. Just, it's a rite of passage. Like, it's, <laughs> it pretty it much is. is. It's, it's, it's how it's designed. It's a super dungeon, and like any yeah. good super dungeon in any good RPG, it beats the shit out of you when you first get there, and you're like, well, okay, gonna have to uh, mm-hmm. rethink our plans. I mean, mm-hmm. this has not been any different for any game. You, know, you look at any Final Fantasy game, for example, and you think of like an infamous super dungeon, and it just it beats the heck out of you immediately. And then, and you well, Final Fantasy have Final Fantasy have seven has the fucking weapons, which yeah, I can't believe I beat Emma. Final Fantasy ten has stuff. like the Omega dungeon, you know that sort of thing. I remember um, the Omega dungeon? That was horrible. <laughs> yeah, fourteen has like um, I haven't played fourteen very much myself, but I know fourteen has a similar sort of idea as well. Yeah. The, there's that crazy cave, which is like just one giant puzzle. There's all sorts of stuff going on. Yeah, you know? 15 it's, has the uh, dungeons where you can get like the weapons for yeah. uh, Noctis and such. But exactly. they actually did that, in my personal opinion, I think they did that well. Regardless of the fact, back to the main topic, Um, going back to like the RPG elements, uh, personally, I felt like the RPG elements of the second game and how enemies are more limited and scripted, where it feels like you have a better understanding of what your play style might be just depending on the weapons the magic and just how and en- how enemies work most in the game I find that a lot better than the first one i felt like the first one you kind of had to grind a bit more you had to go to certain areas and just run around like a headless chicken until like doo-doo. combat music starts and you're like okay get this done or like when you're trying to backtrack and a random encounter appears and you're like oh, i gotta deal with these bunch of a-holes and you're like oh okay where i felt like in the second one i think they did it better to where like oh you have this map well it tells you where there's enemies you're like oh cool if i want to get some extra goodies i'll just go back and fight them if i need to i felt i kind of felt like that was a little bit better system as, at least for parasite eve in my personal opinion was not sure about how you guys feel about that Hmm. Uh, Black Shadow, what do you think about that? Um, sorry, I could, I, I got caught away from it there. I, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I missed like that. You exactly was saying. Yeah, repeat so, that real quick because I, I yeah, did the same sorry. thing. Sorry yeah, about that. I yeah, I was, I was just talking about how like the first game, it's like you get random encounters and sometimes it's just kind of like whatever, and you kind of need to do some random encounters just to get past certain parts. Where the second one was more limited oh. and scripted. How how random like, encounters works. Yeah, and I felt like the scripted and the limitations of enemies gave it to their the player could play how they want to with the supplies and experience they got during the gameplay, and which allowed fights and boss fights to come down to your skill level and you actually getting used to the con- like controls and what your setup is. I just want to know if you guys like that more than the first one or vice versa. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the- it's it's tr- the problem is the difference between the first and the second games is you go from I think a system where there is you can explore and you can grind and you can kind of spend time doing additional stuff and you're kind of you know you're rewarded for doing so more often than not. In the second game, it felt a lot more mandatory and it felt like a lot more sort of thrown upon the player, you know, like and it, the fact it was so readily advertised on the map. 
that once you redo a story sequence or a story event and suddenly the map repopulates and the game's like right you can go all these places and there's loads of shit to fight have at it and the game kind of like it's encouraging you to do it um and my problem with that is that it feels like you're just trying to pad a game a little bit um i think back to dino crisis because it was mentioned a little bit earlier on um and like Dino Crisis 2 as well. Like I thought generally was actually not all that bad a game, except for a couple of sequences where it was blatant that all was happening was you were doing something to fill time and pad the game. And I was just like so abhorrent about it. And it was just like a real letdown for I think it actually wasn't all that bad a game until you got to like the final 30 minutes and then everything lost its damn mind. Um no, I and I think that's give that in Dying Crisis 2 only because of, you know, it's a much faster paced game. So it, in essence, yeah. you could beat it a lot quicker than you would the first game because yeah. how it's designed in comparison to 2. Yeah, and Dying Crisis 2 is also a bit, it can be a bit grindy as well. Um, there's definitely, again, it, but it's a game that kind of like, it encourages you to do it. It's not like it kind of advertises it and says you can do it, you know, to kind of um, get better things. But it, it, it didn't often feel like you had to do it. And that was my problem with two is because you had to like, you know, it, it was so in your face, all these drop repopulations and you had situations where you'd have to like go to one dead end of a map to get hold of your items from a chest to move them to something more convenient. And it was a lot of busy work in the game. I think that was my, my issue with two. It, it, to me, it was pretty stark and obvious. Yeah, um, I, I really enjoy the beginning of two. Uh, but these guys said for the most part there is standstills. I'm beginning to see that with the puzzles where uh, some of them are kind of cryptic as fuck and I'm like mm -hmm. I, how do I figure this out? I guess I gotta look up a guy. Um, so I feel like that's gonna be me during the entire game. Uh, one is just pretty straightforward. It's like you just go in, you fight something, you kill it, and then you get exposition and you move on. It's it's kind of a little bit more convenient in terms of a straightforward formula, but everything else is just like I have to experience it all before I say anything. Yeah, two, two, there was a lot of busy work um, to it, and I think the encounter system played into that. I think one flowed a lot more better, and again, I think the way the encounter system worked flowed into that. All right, so we're going to get... We're, we're gonna get cryo in and then we're gonna spend 10 more minutes in here and then we are done all right let me Thanks for having me no problem uh mr cryo i'm sending you an invite to speak oh you know uh, i thought you were gonna say with us no um each guest has 10 minutes i mean he can okay. he can come in if he wants you want to stay austin i'll give you another invite to speak oh no he's gone he's gone uh, there no, he's, he's, he's oh he's back uh, I'll, yeah. I'll I'll give him invite to speak because it's only two, so you can you can stay with us for the last ten uh, minutes. Yeah. That's yeah. fair enough. But uh, well, Cryo, well, 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 sir. Yeah, we got to give uh, Cryo his turn. So Cryo, anything you have to say about Parasite Eve or survival horror RPGs? Um. Well, I haven't played I haven't played played Parasite Eve before. Um. But um. I will say like in terms of like the horror genre in general survival horror is one of my favorites honestly because um i guess i guess i guess depending on what game what game it is and the genre of that particular game is when it comes to horror i feel like survival horror it makes you it kind of makes you want to look over your shoulder a lot. You know what I mean? Like, um, there's a survival horror game I've been playing a lot. Uh, Ren knows about it because I, because whenever he's joined the call, I always talked about it. Uh, Subnautica. Like, you, <laughs> you're in the middle of literally nowhere on a planet and you're surrounded by ocean and you're in the ocean there's these weird looking creatures and you, sometimes you just hear these loud noises from creatures in the sea and you just look around kind of like going okay where is that coming from is it gonna is it gonna attack me but it turns out to just be like a harmless creature that's not gonna do anything to you and 
I I like that because you don't know what's going to hurt you, what's uh what's not going to hurt you, etc. And and also with survival horror games, it requires you to think more than anything because uh Subnautica you you can like build your build an underground uh, not underground uh, underwater base and everything like that base of operations and you can um craft weapons to protect you against uh the creatures and um uh craft equipment so that way you could last longer underwater so like uh you can uh you can upgrade your oxygen tank on your back so that way you could um breathe longer underwater and just it just a lot of shit that makes you have to think okay should i save my materials for this or should I actually get something else that's going to help me out in the long run? Like, I just love it. Just survival horror in general, just the games that just require you to think, like uh, Darkwood. I believe I believe that's the name of that game. Uh, cause You're right, Darkwood. Darkwood, yeah. Dark, Darkwood is another one of those games where you have to be very careful of what materials you use to uh to craft because yeah you could go ahead and craft something right now but you may actually be able to craft something better in the long run that would be more beneficial to you so you're kind of stuck with the dilemma of should i just do this now or should i just wait and especially when it gets difficult over time that's when you start kind of like going maybe i should have done that earlier I just, I don't know. Survival horror has always hit hit me in the, it's always hit me in the right spot. I mean, uh, especially when you have to hide, like if you're getting chased, and you and you have to hide. That shit, that shit can be the worst. <laughs> yeah, I heard Darkwood mentioned like several times on the Obscure Games podcast, like a lot. So I'm not I'm I'm very like familiar with the term itself and the game. Maybe I'll look at gameplay and check it out. I, I I've seen a yeah. decent amount into it and it it's really creepy. It's kinda of like a kind of like HP Lovecraft almost inspired in many ways. Okay, I like that notion it, because HP is god tier. <laughs> uh, just a quick run play, I don't mean to steal your time, Cryo, but it's basically a top down perspective game. But it's very like slower paced and it's more survival horror with very little RPG elements like you upgrade and get supplies, yada yada. I really hi- highly recommend anyone check it out. I honestly think it's probably one of the scariest like indie like games I've ever seen, really. Yeah, it's it's done like that the um the slow aspect of it, so that way you can get really familiar with the uh not so much the ambiance of it, but that universe, you know, and the environment. That way you're accustomed to, like, what's going on, uh, you know, with the woods, the creatures, the characters that you meet um, on your travels in the game, stuff like that. It's one of those kind of games, which I actually really appreciate, because a lot of people give indies, like, a lot of shit, but in reality, most of them actually do come out with banger games i mean hell there's literally some horror games on itch.io and game jolt that's actually really good and yeah some may be fan games but those fan games are actually not that bad and sometimes they even trump the um the game that they actually made made the fan game of yeah, I mean, there's always diamonds to be found um, in amongst all the games. Like, especially there's as many games that work as many games that don't work, um, and even other ones that do work. Like, some of them you can feel are just a bit kind of carbon copy of other games that have worked mainstream. But there's nothing inherently necessarily wrong about. Yeah, and that. and exactly, and and plus with indies, I mean, with the indie games, um. I know for me, like if it's like the first or second game, I'm like trial and trial and error. I mean, 
sometimes the first or not even the second game could come out like how they actually wanted to but over time with lots of practice and the more games that they make and the more that they learn from their mistakes from their previous game that they will grow i know that's happened um many times where like i remember watching um uh, markiplier play a uh, an indie game i forgot the name of it and he was saying that uh something like something was up with the ambiance it didn't feel necessary like a horror game but then it's like they actually watched the video that he did and everyone saying uh, everyone agreeing with them and then the the second game that they made was better than that and it was even more like horror and and everyone was going like, yeah, yeah, they learned. Yeah, that's definitely, the ambiance is there. Okay, so Cryo, I have a final question for you. Um, yeah. If there was any game franchise out there that you want them to try like more RPG mechanics and they aren't necessarily known for them, uh, what would you sort of recommend as a survival horror like experience for RPGs? So Resident Evil or maybe Silent Hill, what would you like to try for RPG mechanics in that vein for horror games? Oh, that I've never played or if uh, they just like... Just hypothetically speaking, like uh, what type of horror franchise would you want to have RPG mechanics as like a side game? Oh, um, honestly, given how... Now, it could be because I'm on a Subnautica kick. Honestly, <laughs> I would love for Subnautica to actually have um, even more RPG elements. Because a lot of people have said, like, Subnautica and uh, I think also Below Zero. But both games are pretty much almost like survival horror RPG. But it steers away from the traditional survival horror RPG element. So I would love to see them actually implement more RPG elements to Subnautica for the third game. I would love to see that. Especially with how popular Subnautica, how popular the uh, Subnautica games are. I'm going to say RE because I know people are going to be mad about it. (laughs) I I, I, I know. No, we already dabbled in the RPG stuff. No, before, I'm I'm, ta- I'm like, talking I'm talking like full on like magical <laughs> elements. I'm talking like <laughs> spells. Oh, all turn that. base, turn base, Kappa? Yeah, stuff like that. I, I, I mean, because I know people yeah, are gonna be honestly, mad about it. Low I mean, key, um, the closest thing to it is Teppin. Really? Yeah, Teppin. But also, I believe there's like an actual like old, slightly old Japanese game that had like a bunch of Capcom characters that was an RPG game. Uh, Project like X Zone, maybe that. Maybe I think it might have been that. Yeah, it's Project X Zone cross zone. Um, also Neko cross Capcom. You know, they have um cross yeah. between two companies or three in cross zones case. So yeah, mm-hmm. technically also, yeah, Capcom did have an RPG game, just they didn't develop it, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But um, so- I also would like to interject about the uh, adding RPG elements to a horror franchise. The best one I can honestly think of is uh Aliens. Xenomorphs having an alien RPG survival horror game would be awesome. And I have the tabletop game for my dad, and that's already like really cool from just everything that I've read about it. But having an actual video game that's similar to that in terms of design would be insane. I'd take that, that'd be awesome. I speaking of that, I, I actually, because since, since actually you might as well consider that game the well aliens because i know there's a game coming out hopefully this year most likely it's going to be delayed but i I really want to play that game yeah i really want to play that game it's got my attention especially because it's giving me um left for left for dead vibes it's it's really giving me those vibes here so i want to play it more it's funny it's more world war z-esque but with like a bit more randomization like Left 4 Dead in terms of encounters. Yeah, like I I like games like that that have that give you objectives to do and it's not just, you know, 
you know, run, get to the chopper, run, we're running out of time, come on. Oh, get the like, predator, like, we need to get out of here now. Exactly, because that kind of shit, it gets really old over time, especially in survival horror games. And it's like, you know, we, you know, we get it, you know, just survive, run, get to the exfil. But the fact that you get to do objectives and survive while also making sure you don't use too much of your resources, because if you're getting surrounded and you've already used all your grenades and the grenades for your um, grenade launcher, uh... Yeah, you're pretty much screwed. Okay, so fellas. I like games that that really do that. We we are officially out of time, so we have to yeah. uh, outro the guests, and then we are off. So Cryo, mm -hmm. where can we find you, buddy? Uh, you can find me on YouTube and Twitter. Uh, both under Cryo Gaming. And Austin, where can we find you? Uh, you can mostly find me on Twitter at at Dragoon Spirit uh, I'm getting there to get my own YouTube channel and streaming when I eventually get my PC. So check out for that. Awesome. So before we oh. finish, 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 I just mm -hmm. want to make sure I got one thing correct here. So you're suggesting Resident Evil with fantasy <laughs> elements, magic, <laughs> crazy yeah. shit. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yes. Reverse. Let's go, man. Reverse. I, yeah. I, 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 reverse. I don't think we can be friends anymore. Right? Look, <laughs> this is this is the only reason I'm suggesting this because I know everyone just like that. E even if it's a spinoff, <laughs> if it's a spinoff, Pierce are gonna have a heart attack. Like I know it, and I'm gonna be like, it's just a spinoff game, so it's not really affecting anything. They did what if stories before with Resident Evil, etc. So I'm like, if they do this, I just want to see the reaction because I know it's going to be a nuclear bomb. It, it's going to be, and it's going to be the You're, funniest you, thing you ever. You just want to trigger people. Just, just <laughs> yeah. Oh. I mean, at all. Oh, no, his thing, though. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And, I'm sorry. But here it is. No, Resident Evil 9. Yeah, you get uh, Rose has a skill tree, and you can start upgrading her mold powers to do other cool shit, like summon molds to help her. Oh, very nice. Oh, she can enhance her guns with her mold powers, making them special. That goals. sounds like some dark side of shit there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, real quick, though. Like, um, technically speaking, Ren, like, that stuff already exists in the world via crossover games. So, like, if they get upset that a non canon spinoff game goes off the rails, then, you know, you know, fuck them. Yeah, I, yeah. I just want it so bad. I know, I know people are going to lose their mind, but it's going to be like the best thing ever. Also, my dog has like sneezing problems. Sorry about that, Poochie. <laughs> uh, but it... okay, one last thing, though. What? Um, it's not superior, Ren, it's just different. Oh man, that's gonna be a phrase that gets stuck in my head forever. And that guy unfollowed me, so I'm like, I, I don't know, something's wrong with Resident Evil Pierce. I'll maybe I'll discover the problem, maybe I won't, but who knows? He just never satisfy idiots. No, yeah, you can't, especially when you say, like, well, the dodge button in like Resident Evil 3 OG is yeah, not that, that great, but in the remake, it's obviously much better, so. I don't I know. enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, me too. Me too. It's like it's easier to do. It's it takes skill too, so it's it's really good in a sense. And I don't know why people downplay that. Nemesis Infernal Final Fight. <laughs> oh no, uh, that's something different. No right. hands only. Let's go. Blindfolded. <laughs> yes. All right, but we're gonna close off this podcast. It was fun, and um, look forward to the village discussion when we do it later next month. Can't wait. See you people right. later in YouTube land. Yep. Peace. That's awesome now. Yeah.